you're in the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Now, I'm starting to think here, Chris O'Brien, that the book Stalking of the Herd is going to be a pretty big book. Uh, well, uh, I hope you're talking about big in sales. Uh, it's definitely going to be big in terms of its size and, and the scope of it. Now, the question I wonder about here is how come nobody else has been able to do this before Chris O'Brien tackled it? Is it because well, we're just so wedded to the belief that cattle mutilations, it's just another part of the UFO mystery, maybe a more bizarre aspect? Well, you know, I think the problems are there's several issues uh, at play here. One is having access to all the data. Uh, obviously, most of these cases, especially the hell years, as I call them, in the 70s, this is prior to the Internet. And so in order to have all the cases and you know access to the databases, you have to know the players who were involved back then collecting the data, which fortunately I, I, I'm one of the few people that that pretty much knows everybody who – was involved in the field um, on the civilian investigator side. So I have access to the databases, and I'm the first one to really tackle the huge monumental task of, of collating all these databases together, combining them with my own work, which I've, I've been researching this subject for over 20 years. So it's really difficult unless you have uh, you know access to the data to be able to to do anything that's objective, that's that's comprehensive, that's in depth, it's just a monumental task, and uh, there's only two, three people that would be able to do it, and I just happen to be one of them. So I'm, I, you know, I really want to throw this thing, you know, like mud, throw it at the wall, see what sticks, and and really have give people an opportunity to make up their own minds about this thing instead of having to to be subjected to a single narrow view. On the subject, which has been running roughshod over all the other potential explanations over the years, uh, aliens g- gathering genetic material from cows. Uh, I'm sorry, there's w- a lot more data out there to suggest something else is going on. Well, I have kind of that same problem with abductions. Not that real things aren't happening, but so many abductions, how often do the aliens have to collect our genetic pool evidence before they have it? And can't it be done in a less painful way? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good analogy. I, there's so much about about all these paranormal subjects that that just doesn't make sense. And the only way that you can really, I think, get to the bottom, potentially get to the bottom of some of these mysteries, is to look at all the data. Unfortunately, when it comes to abductions, much of this data, so-called data, is being retrieved through hypnotic regression, which uh, you know we've discussed many times on the show, is a questionable investigative tool. But when it comes to thousands of pounds of physical evidence lying out in a field, that's it's a little different. Um, we're not relying solely on anecdotal evidence. We're not relying on people's recollections. Uh, you know, we have police reports. We have newspaper stories that that talk about about you know real physical evidence. So it's a little easier, I think, for me in a sense that there are uh, there was quite a bit of uh, media coverage and obviously media coverage is not uh, always accurate so it, you you really have to go through all the case histories and and look for commonalities and descriptions and in the abduction phenomenon it, it's just it's so much more difficult to do that and the problem is here is we get to a very polarized area with abductions it's either or with no room in between to explain the events. You're either with me or you're against me. There's no, we don't know what's going on, let's figure out what's going on, let's come to some conclusions. It's too polarized, but that's the entire UFO field. Yeah. Well, one thing, people are going to get an education about our relationship with cattle. Um, That's one thing that you don't hear ever mentioned by other researchers in the um, unexplained livestock death phenomenon is how this may tie into our sacred relationship and now unceremonious uh, relationship with cattle. And this may be an important key sort of blind spot that uh, certain investigators and researchers out there have, have, have just, you know, it's a forest for the trees thing. They're just not factoring in very important, deeply held cultural connections with cattle. Uh, so 
people are definitely going to get an education. Let's put it that way. Certainly, before I have my next steak dinner, I want to read a few more chapters of the book. Yeah, well, local mumia, as the Greeks used to say, you know, get on the highest hill, and if you can see, you know, if you can see where the food is coming from, chances are it's uh, going to be the best thing for you to consume. Grass-fed beef without hormones, without antibiotics, organic beef, well, is a little bit more expensive, but boy, it's sure a lot safer. Well, of course, you can't get the best prices over at Walmart or even get organic beef at Walmart. Oh, oh man. Don't say the W word and beef in the same sentence, please. That's, that's very frightening. Well, I don't buy beef at Walmart. I go to Walmart. I shop at Walmart, but I don't get beef there. What's wrong with the beef at Walmart? Or is that what's wrong with any mass-produced beef? Yeah. Yeah, it's any, any large chain. Anytime you see that, uh, you know, that that beef on styrofoam wrapped in plastic, chances are it comes from a feedlot. It's pumped full of antibiotics. It's pumped full of growth hormones. Uh, it, it's these animals are, live in horrific conditions. It's very sad and highly inhumane. The conditions that we uh, that we find in the, in the, the big super industrial feedlots now in this country, these animals are unceremoniously dispatched uh, in some of these feedlots up to 400 an hour and uh, industrialized uh, beef protein. I mean, a single McDonald's hamburger could have up to a thousand different animals in it. Um, it McDonald's admits that it could have up to a hundred, but tests have been done and, and studies have shown that up to a thousand different animals could be in a single hamburger. Um, I personally uh, feel that that's <laughs> that you're playing Russian roulette. That's more homogenized than I would like. I also worry about chicken. And yeah. It's probably the same deal, you know, because you have these big agribusiness companies producing all this stuff. Right. And, 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 and pork as well. Look, the Chinese just brought, bought the largest pork producing operation in the United States. Smithfield Farms is now uh, owned by the majority ownership by the Chinese. Okay. You know what? I think I'm going to starve to death or become a vegetarian. No, wait, that's produced by a multi-million dollar corporation, too. <laughs> and I'm sure they're doing all sorts of funky things with pesticides and pouring things on there, too. Well, you know Monsanto what? is holding the entire agricultural business hostage with uh, their gen genetic modified organisms, GMOs. I'll tell you what. No food ever. I give it up. You know what? Let's do a little time shifting right now, okay? Well, we can be like John Alexander's wife, Victoria. She survives on 600 calories of egg whites a day, from what I understand. Ew, I don't like eggs. <laughs> I'll never survive <laughs> under that. Hey, let's do a little time shifting, okay? Okay. Imagine for a moment we have an alternate timeline, and we talk about alternate dimensions and everything. And, of course, alternate timelines is at the heart of the reboot for the Star Trek series. The Star Trek movies are all about an alternate timeline. What if Kennedy survived Dallas? What if in November 1963, maybe he was wounded, but he survived. He lived on. What would happen? A lot of interesting speculation. Of course, we're always obsessed with the Kennedy assassination, no matter what. What we're talking about here, though, is a new book by Bryce Zabel, called Surrounded by Enemies, What If Kennedy Survived Dallas? Of course, we know Bryce Abel from the book he wrote with Richard Dolan called After Disclosure. Richard Dolan will be back on the Paracast probably in three weeks, but next week we'll have Colin Andrews, the crop circle researcher, and Brad Steiger the following week. How about that? He also, Bryce Abel, also did the Dark Skies TV series. Not the movie, but the TV series. So he's coming up next. Our friend Bryce Zabel, author of Surrounded by Enemies. All this, much more coming. You're in the Paracast. Neighbors, are you tired of dealing with a slow web hosting provider? Well, check out A2 Hosting and their screaming fast Swift server platform. They even have SSDs that load pages 300% faster than the competition. Ready to give your site a speed boost? Well, 
Tell you what, neighbors, head on over to a2hosting.com. That's A2, that's number two, a2hosting.com. Check out their Prime Hosting account. And get this, neighbors, they're even giving you an exclusive 25% off discount for all our listeners. 25%. And remember, their Guru Crew support team is standing by 24-7, 365 days a year to answer any of your questions. Now, to get the discount, use the coupon code GENE when you check out. Hi, this is Gary Cooper with Midas Resources Gold and Silver. Government shutdown, inept politicians, entitlements, looming Obamacare. The death of the U.S. dollar as a global reserve currency is what nobody wants to acknowledge. We have a debt bubble that cannot be paid and will eventually crash the dollar. If you're concerned about keeping your money, why not consider storing your wealth in gold and silver? Call me, Gary Cooper, at 1-800-686-2237, extension 130. Together, we'll discuss your options of buying gold and silver. Again, the global elite have plans for your money, and it doesn't include you. So call me, Gary Cooper, at 1-800-686-2237, extension 130, and we'll discuss your options of buying precious metals. Also, I can send you information on how you can roll over your IRA or 401k into a precious metal IRA. Again, don't get caught with money in your account when the dollar crashes. Call me, Gary Cooper, at 1-800-686-2237. Three seven extension one thirty. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. There are many things the human body can do very well, but maintaining the proper pH level isn't always one of them. That's where AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops can make a world of difference. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps your body do what's natural. Just a few drops a day helps rid your body of harmful waste and acid while promoting health and restoring vibrance and energy. Alkalizing boosts your immune system and can help fight headaches, irritability, cramping, and insomnia. Alkalizing also helps the body fight depression and even bone loss. To learn more about the importance of alkalizing and how you can find life-changing and vital balance, please visit AlkaVision's brand new website at AlkaVision.com. Same great products, but now easier to use and more informative than ever before. To get your very own plasma pH drops for just $29.95, call 800-518-7615 or visit AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Alkalize your body and supercharge your health at the new AlkaVision.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. The aliens are after us, by the way. We recorded a segment of this episode and never got set down. Don't ask me to explain that because we know that E.T. is causing it, and I hear him right now in the background, so we'll, we'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> On the PowerCast with Gene and Chris, we welcome back Bryce Sable to the show. He, of course, was co-producer of the Dark Skies TV series from the 1990s, Emmy award-winning series that, despite winning an Emmy, it didn't win a renewal, which is so sad. But you can still get the DVD version of Dark Skies, and I recommend it. And we'll get into more of Dark Skies in a moment. He's also co-author with Rich Dolan of AD After Disclosure, and also has a new book out that's going to be the main focus, and that is Surrounded by Enemies, What If Kennedy Survived Dallas? And I think the first question to ask Bryce Abel is, what if Bryce Abel survived 
a second production called Dark Skies that he had nothing to do with. What happened? Well, Gene, Gene the fact that I'm on your your uh, broadcast means that uh, I have survived, but it wasn't it wasn't pleasant. As you point out, Dark Skies was an NBC series from the 90s. Its concept was that John Kennedy was assassinated because he was going to tell the truth about UFOs in his second term. And the series after the pilot did not focus on John Kennedy. It focused on uh, the 1960s. But it wove in ufological facts and events, etc., abductions, you name it, and was a, a UFO television series on a major network uh, where we produced uh, 22 hours of it. So a, a pretty substantial investment of, of time and money on the part of uh, – NBC and Sony to make that. Then uh, about a year ago, I started getting emails from all over the world from people congratulating me on selling my TV series as a feature film starring Carrie Russell with the assumption being that I must be rolling in cash by this point because of this, this fantastic sale. Well, the truth of the matter is they did make a movie called Dark Skies. It is about alien abductions and it's not mine. I didn't make a dime from it. No one consulted me about it. No one tried to no one tried to license it from me or Sony. Uh, Dimension Films just made this film with that title on that subject on their own. And that's the way it is. It's it's a little troubling, but that's that's Hollywood for you. No way to have trademarked or copyrighted that title. Well, or is well, it too generic? It, no, not really. It's it's kind of uh, it, it, that would require a, a couple of lawyers in here to to parse. But the truth of the matter is, when I heard about it, I did go to the people who hold the license to Dark Skies. In other words, uh, Brent Friedman and I co-created the series in the '90s. But in order to get it produced, we sold the the uh, rights to it to what was then Columbia Television and is now Sony. And uh, so I contacted Sony when I heard about what I considered to be this infraction. Uh, on the part of Dimension Films and said, hey, we sort of have a mutual interest in protecting the Dark Skies name. You guys can't be happy about what Dimension Films is doing. And uh, although they weren't happy about it, uh, what came back to me uh, from Sony was, well, we do a lot of business with Harvey Weinstein and uh, we really don't feel like uh, pissing him off right now. So uh, they let it stand. And there was just nothing I could do about it because I don't own it. Now, uh, to the second part of your question there about titles and all that. That is a, a difficult area. You know, on one level, you'll find people to say, well, you can't copyright a title. Well, if that's the case, then you and I should go make a movie called Avatar 2. And people would assume that it was the sequel. Well, you can't uh, trademark. You can't trademark. You, you name. can do things with names. There are ways to, to go. Uh, but uh, it sort of depends on what f form it was first expressed how long has passed a, a number of different things. I mean, let's face it, the Butler uh, just uh, had a big dust up over that actually with Weinstein, I think as well in this last year. So you, you sort of need both parties to see the problem and come together on it. And unfortunately uh, I was merely the writer and the producer and the creator, which uh, probably wasn't sufficient to uh, force anyone to do the right thing. And Sony, as I said, chose to let it slide in the interest of keeping good relations with uh, Weinstein and Dimension. The movie was made. I don't think it's been a huge success, but it it bothers me because it has muddied the waters. Uh, Dark Skies uh, is a DVD series now that just came out recently uh, where all the episodes are gathered together and people are seeing it for the first time. Uh, you can get it right now on Amazon. And it's fantastic the way it came together, because when it was on television, most people didn't have a DVR at that time. And so they they would miss an episode and it was gone forever. Well, now there it's back. And so I'm a little troubled that uh, the Dark Skies brand name that I worked so hard to create has been muddied. But that's Hollywood, baby. OK, well, let me give you have... the figures, by the way, from Box Office Mojo. Dark Skies. Supposedly really filmed on the cheap. They claimed that the production budget was three and a half million. So I don't know what where do they give minimum wage to Carrie Russell. By the way, I like Carrie Russell. She's a great actress. I she love does her in great the Americans. in the Americans, the FX TV series where she plays this Soviet born spy. It, it, she's just really good. But anyway, the movie grossed worldwide twenty six million dollars. Now it doesn't sound like a lot, you know. But well, with a I wish I had budget my budget like that, that. They probably made a profit. Yes, they did. They they did. Uh, and you, you toss the numbers around. They spent three and a half million and made you know in the twenties. Uh, there's probably some profit in there. Um, 
also, uh, just, just so your your listeners can appreciate this, we spent, uh, I think we had a budget of $2 million, uh, approximately per episode. And I think we spent like $44 million on our episodes. So you get more bang for the buck going with the TV series right now. So I encourage people to strike a blow for creative freedom by renting or buying the Dark Skies TV series and, and as well as the feature if you want to see the feature. I also have another dark controversy with Art Bell deciding to name his uh, comeback show Dark Matter, which is a direct takeoff on Don Ecker's long time running radio show Dark Matters. So we have this kind of dark <laughs> name game and, kind of and, scenario and, and, going on here. I, you know, I, I don't know the details of it, but I, I can't imagine. I, I can imagine that art and coast to coast aren't on the best terms either. I gather they're not because I read some comments from Bell where he was disparaging the interviewing abilities of George Norrie, called him a lazy interviewer. Now, we've said the same thing, but, you know, what's the point? George Norrie has his show. He seems like a decent guy. I don't listen to the show. He's entitled to make a living, but there you go. But you I know, don't I, I was, like the I, idea of what Art Bell did because he knows who Don Ecker is. He knows Don Ecker. Don Ecker was on Coast to Coast when Art Bell was the host. So you how could he be ignorant of the fact that Don Ecker has for years hosted a radio show, it's now online, called Dark Matters? It's all troubling. I tend to think when you see a case like that, that you're seeing the tip of the iceberg and there must be more iceberg underneath the water that we're not seeing. I, I'll say that both Coast to Coast and Art Bell have been good to me over the years. And Art Bell, by the way, is actually appears in Dark Skies playing William S. Paley, the head of CBS, as a member of the Majestic 12 or organization. So that's probably the most insidious thing I've ever done on television. And uh, Art was the point man there. You know what? I'll let you live that down. Okay. I will not <laughs> let I got to tell you. you, Art Bell made a wonderful William S. Paley in the Dark Skies episode, and, and uh, you know, that was great. Okay, the book that we're discussing in our next segment, Surrounded by Enemies, the author is Bryce Sable. You're on with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. GCN. Great talk radio starts here. If you want to get your website online and you need reliable service, first-class service at the lowest possible price, there's only one place to go. Well, DreamHost has a special promotion with our show where they'll offer you unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, one-click web apps such as WordPress, 24-7 support. You can save over $55. You want to know how? Go to DreamHost.com slash radio, DreamHost.com slash radio. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Hello, I'm Steve Shank. Everybody's heard the statement that what you don't know can't hurt you. But truth is, what you don't know is the only thing that can hurt you. For example, you might not know how our country's wars can hurt you. Japanese radiation and the Gulf oil spill are destroying your seafood. People don't understand how America's 50-year worst drought is hurting them. Our natural disaster experience has proven relief organizations can't take care of the victims. And there's the huge question of how the government will feed all the people that it's promised to feed with no food. What if we made the whole country into one big neighborhood where we take care of each other by taking care of ourselves? Here's the plan. For every new EPAC 60-day food supply that you order, eFoods Direct will send a 7-day food supply to each of two families in your name, free of charge. Go to eFoodsDirect.com or call 800-876-0871. 800-876-0871. eFoodsDirect.com. 
We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light Systems system today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. Not all protein powders are created equal. One World Whey is the first cold temperature processed, 100%, all natural, unrefined, bioactive, grass pasture raised milk whey protein. Far from being another ordinary protein supplement, One World Whey is a full spectrum nutrition power food in and of itself, providing overall life building benefits that touch virtually every human's life that other protein supplements don't deliver on. What are the benefits? Boosts the immune system, anti-aging properties, helps detoxification, helps lose body fat, supports excellent blood sugar levels, excellent for building muscle, increases in energy levels, enhances the feelings of youth, energy for exercise and recovery. Who's it for? Anyone wanting to feel healthy and have energy. Busy people, office workers, growing children, students, teachers, seniors, people recovering from illness, and high-performance athletes. Call 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. Hi, this is Don Ecker, and you are tuned into the Paracast. Let me tell you what. You're going to hear stuff here that you probably won't hear anywhere else. Hear that, George Snorri? With Gene and Chris in the Paracast, Bryce Abel joins us. The book takes an alternate timeline. It's surrounded by enemies. What if Kennedy survived Dallas? So we approach 50th anniversary of the Kennedy assassination. So this endless fascination with Kennedy, the mystique, all the things about it, but also the assassination, because in the minds of a lot of people, it was never fully resolved. We had the Warren Commission saying it was Lee Harvey Oswald. We had a congressional committee in, I guess, the late 70s saying it was a conspiracy, but there was no follow-up. You know, typical of Congress, they drop the ball, but they always drop the ball. So there you go. So is that part of it right there that inspired you to write this, the fact that we just can't stop thinking about what happened? I think that's true. We, we can't stop thinking about what happened. Those of a certain age who lived through it probably remember being children and, and when uh, Kennedy was assassinated, remember that this was the first time for many of them they saw an adult cry. It was a very powerful time for all of us. I, I think the 50th anniversary also just happens to ring a bell for a lot of people. It's it's a passage of time that you can't help but be affected by. Uh, I personally, as a dramatist, have always felt that uh, the passage of time allows us to to take a look at uh, historical characters in a different way and to have uh, some dramatic fun with that. For example, I don't think anybody complains that they made Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter other than for creative reasons. We well, you know, Abraham some of us Lincoln... will say not for creative reasons. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> but I mean, we Abraham Lincoln has receded far enough in history that he can become a character in almost anything. And I think the same is happening to John Kennedy. Certainly, I felt that when I did Dark Skies, that John Kennedy was uh, a historical character who could be blended into dramatic content. And this book, Surrounded by Enemies, uh, What If Kennedy Survived Alice, uh, just to point out, is a novel. Uh, It is not a nonfiction book, although there is uh, a great deal of research that I have done over the years put into it. And I, I think that what I've tried to do is give form to that feeling that that people have had over the years, they always wonder, well, what if he hadn't been cut down in the prime of his life and career? I mean, after all, this was a, a handsome, telegenic, powerful, charismatic person, and and he he wasn't even into his second term, and then he was taken away. And people wonder, well, what what would have happened? And I I've noticed over the years that the what if factor breaks down into a couple of things, and neither one 
was what interested me. The first one is the rose colored glasses look, which is if, if Kennedy hadn't died, oh my God, everything would have been better. We, we wouldn't have had any counterculture demonstrations and Vietnam uh, wouldn't have happened and the civil rights bill would have been passed immediately and it would have been the age of Aquarius, basically. Uh, and then the other breaks down into the time travel, uh, people going back in time to save JFK. Uh, the most recent practitioner of that is Stephen King with his 900 plus page book, of which about three pages are what would happen if JFK had survived. I decided to make a whole meal of it and to do it with a straight face. Um, so what I've written in Surrounded by Enemies is a book that in essence is a 50th anniversary journalistic telling of how the world changed from the day that Kennedy didn't die and uh, what, what really would have happened. And I think that, well, I'll just put it this way. John Kennedy in his life was probably one headline away from disaster for, for much of his presidency. And uh, I kind of run with that. Well, I think as far as the civil rights law is concerned, Kennedy didn't have the arm-twisting abilities that LBJ did. LBJ knew where all the bodies were buried. So when he told his fellow legislators or his former colleagues to do this, that, or the other thing, he had the complete list of the problems that would expose them. I That's mean, he, true. But on the other hand, I'm not sure that that was why LBJ was able to be so successful with the civil rights legislation as much as in our timeline, John Kennedy was a, a martyr and there was a great national will to do something, you know, to honor him, to to complete his uh, legislative package to everything from pass the tax cut to to the civil rights legislation. So even though Lyndon Johnson was one of the greatest arm twisters of all time and in, in the congressional matter of thinking, he also had a powerful wind at his back, which was the martyred president, which, wow. by the way, is the essence of Surrounded by Enemies, which is if Kennedy didn't die, he wouldn't have been a martyr. He would have been a mere mortal. And the history that would have been written in the aftermath of a failed assassination attempt in Dallas uh, would not have been about a martyr, but would have been about a real flesh and blood uh, human being who was trying to get a second term. The other thing to consider here, too, is we know now, but we didn't know then, is John Kennedy may have looked the picture of health, but he was decidedly otherwise. Absolutely. I, I think that what has come out in a drip, drip, drip over the last 50 years uh, has been a sense that John Kennedy had a, a secret uh, private life and a secret uh, professional life, both. And uh, we've gotten used to these revelations uh, a little bit at a time. And in, in my book, for example, Surrounded by Enemies, I don't do it a little bit at a time. I would say that uh, in the aftermath, the backwash of a failed assassination attempt, it's very likely that what dripped out over 50 years in our timeline might have come crashing out in a year in his timeline with different effects. But to the point of the medical, yes, absolutely. John Kennedy literally had the world convinced that he was an extremely healthy person. He was always suntanned. He talked about national vigor and his own personal vigor was seen in that touch football playing and, and even the president's physical fitness uh, uh, situation. All of that stuff was designed to make him look like a, a healthy, vital individual. And certainly in mind and spirit, he was, but he had terrible medical problems, had from his birth and, and, and literally had been given uh, last rites by the Catholic Church, I believe, four times before he even became president. So he had some things that he was not disclosing to the American public about his medical condition. These days, uh, that would be impossible, but he got away with a lot back then. Specifically, what things well, could have crippled possibly even his ability to run for a second term. Well, he had Addison's disease, uh, which certainly made a, you know, a big difference in, in how uh, he, in the medical conditions that he had to live with and what medicine he took as a response to that. But he was also getting uh, injections from uh, Dr. Max uh, uh, Jacobson, who many people know as Dr. Feelgood, the same guy that gave those injections to Elvis Presley, uh, was also giving them to John Kennedy and his wife. Um, and plus, um, he, he just had so many different things. I mean, he he suffered from stomach, colon and prostate problems. He had high fevers. He had occasional dehydration. He had abscesses, sleeplessness, high cholesterol. I mean, he had these adrenal ailments that came from Addison's 
deceased. Yeah, a terribly trashed back as well. Well, his back had been, but his back was probably trashed. We were led to believe that that was more like a war injury, but in reality, it was probably the result of um, the Addison's disease and uh, and and how that had uh, affected his back and how operations had had to be done and and with with whatever success. I mean, on the day that John Kennedy actually died, he was wearing a very restrictive. Uh, shoulder to groin brace that sort of held him upright. So even when he was shot uh, the first time, uh, he was available to be shot the second time because he didn't slump. He was pretty much held rigid and erect by the the back brace. But but again, uh, the question really is, uh, are you supposed to disclose these things when you're president? The answer is yes. And why? Because uh, it might affect your ability to conduct uh, your your policies in office. And certainly you'd, you'd want to know if the president of the United States was on, a, on any given medication during the Cuban Missile Crisis. I would think thinking that he might be on something with amphetamines would be something that the public probably has a right to know. The question is here just how clear was he? And the second question I raise here, with all that jury rigging to prop this guy up, medically, physically, would he have even run him for a second term or maybe let Bobby do it? What no, I think going he on behind the scenes? And that's another issue we have to talk about in our next segment. <laughs> I look forward to it. It's fascinating where we can go with this and what would happen. And then we can talk, of course, about his legislative achievements and how that might have worked out if we didn't have the martyr issue. The book is called Surrounded by Enemies. What if Kennedy survived Dallas? With Bryce Sable joining Gene and Chris, you're in The Paracast. America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. Is there a secret UFO agenda? Do strange creatures from the darkest corners of the mind roam the earth? Is there evidence for mind control, time travel, or devious government conspiracies? Find out the inside scoop on the latest conspiracies, paranormal activity, and Freudian phenomena when you subscribe to Tim Beckley's Conspiracy Journal. It's jam-packed with stories, special book and DVD promotions, and the best news, it's absolutely free, sent right to your mailbox. Plus, a bonus free email newsletter sent out every Friday. Simply send an email with your name and address to MrUFO at WebTV.net. That's MrUFO at WebTV.net. Find out what they don't want you to know. Are you prepared for disasters, job loss, and uncertain times? Make Emergency Essentials your first stop for premier food storage and emergency preparedness supplies. Compare our food storage ounce to ounce and it's easy to see. Emergency Essentials has the best quality and lowest priced emergency food storage guaranteed. Call Emergency Essentials at 800-999-1863 today or visit BePrepared.com. The choice is clear. Be unprepared or BePrepared.com. Hi, I'm Ed Krell, CEO of Destination Maternity. We proudly support the March of Dimes work to reduce the rate of premature birth. The numbers have gone down in the past five years, but still nearly half a million babies are born too soon in the United States each year. We're helping the March of Dimes fund cutting-edge research and community programs to help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Join us in working together for stronger, healthier babies. Visit MarchofDimes.com. Curious about what comes next? Next is the feeling of vulnerability you get after you arrive home to discover your house has been ransacked by burglars. Fool the bad guys with a new improved fake TV. You asked for it, we listened, and we made our new fake TV three times brighter than our previous model. The brightness of our new fake TV is equivalent to a 40-inch TV. It simulates the color and motion of a real TV while you're away from home. And when burglars think someone is home watching television, they're likely to pass your house and move on to an easier target. The new, brighter fake TV is only $39.95 and includes free shipping. 
Go to faketv.com or call 1-877-5-FAKE-TV. That's 877-532-5388 or go to faketv.com. Fake TV, the burglar deterrent. A little over a year ago, I began to do a lot of research into why, even though I had a pretty good-sized meal, that I was still starving. And my research led me to a well-known fact that most of the soils that we grow our crops on here in the United States and across the industrialized world are almost completely depleted of almost all of the key minerals and trace elements that our bodies need to rebuild themselves, fight off cancer, and be healthy. I then searched out the best vitamin and mineral company out there and discovered Longevity. The Longevity products are designed to give you the real nutrition you need, and once you've got that, you don't have to eat as much to be satisfied. I've lost 37 pounds in two months, simply getting the vitamins and minerals I need. Check it out for yourself. It's incredible. Go to InfoWarsTeam.com today and order your first canister of Beyond Tangy Tangerine Complete Multivitamin Mineral Complex Dietary Supplement. That's InfoWarsTeam.com. This is Leslie Kane, and I'm with the Coalition for Freedom of Information, and you are listening to the Paracast. There's no truth to the rumor that Bryce Abel only comes on this show to say the Paracast. I, I, you know what? I don't do it that good, but I, but I do like to do it, and that's why I'm here. Uh, but you guys are great guys, though. Don't get me wrong, but saying the Paracast is very fun. Basically, the two best people who do it, other than Chris, of course. <laughs> Two best people are you and Nick Redfern. I don't even pretend to be in that crowd, but I'm thankful to be included in any crowd with those names. Okay. The question being here that I posed in our previous segment, we have President Kennedy being propped up medically and physically because of Addison's disease and all the other stuff that's going on. Would he have even been healthy enough to get a second term or even seek a second term? I think the answer is a clear yes. Uh, And for that, we don't have to go to my alternative history timeline, but to the real timeline. John Kennedy was clearly able to conduct himself uh, properly in the office, and he had every intention of running for election. He had had many meetings about uh, who he thought he was going to run against. In this case, he thought it would be Barry Goldwater. He was laying out his reelection plans. Uh, he totally intended to run. There was a question of whether he would have kept Lyndon Johnson on the, the ticket or not. Um, I think it's possible that had Kennedy been reelected and served out his term, uh, his second term, he would have found himself increasingly unable to distance the public's knowledge of some of his uh, medical issues over time. And that's certainly a possibility. But no, he was going for it. Uh, He probably uh, was in a a great position to uh, be elected again, although I will say they were terribly worried in the White House uh, about his reelection campaign uh, uh, possibilities because they realized that historically they were about to lose the entire South. And they were concerned that that would tip the balance of the Electoral College to the Republican nominee. So he didn't think he had a cakewalk. Uh, He probably you know, could have won easily, but but probably not as easily as Lyndon Johnson did in, in our timeline, because let's face it, again, Lyndon Johnson was uh, receiving the benefit of the martyred president uh, whose position he had just taken. Okay, surrounded by enemies, who do you list as his enemies? Whom do you blame for the attempted assassination? Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, first of all, I would love for your uh, listeners to find out the whole story by reading the book themselves. But I will tell you this. Uh, My premise is that on November 23rd, 1963, if JFK had survived an attempt on his life, and let's face it, he would have woken up the day after and realized someone had tried to execute him on a public street in broad daylight. That's a pretty sobering thing for any individual to reach as a conclusion. And he and his brother, Bobby Kennedy, would have probably huddled immediately to discuss who might have been behind it. And my contention is Jack and Bobby Kennedy would probably have become the nation's first conspiracy theorists because they, more than anybody, would have known how many people wished John Kennedy ill, how many people uh, would like to have seen him dead or at least out of office. And so to answer your question, in uh, Surrounded by Enemies, the Kennedys and their team get together to try to decide 
who who might be behind it. And I, I will uh, I'll just run some of the bases. I mean, clearly uh, they would have been a little worried about the CIA because after the Bay of Pigs, Kennedy had said he wanted to smash the organization and scatter it to the wind. He had terrible relations with the CIA. He didn't have good relations with the FBI and J. Edgar Hoover. Uh, he probably would have been somewhat suspicious of the Secret Service who clearly booted their assignment in uh, Dallas. There were the usual international suspects of the Soviet Union, uh, but also Castro, who uh, the Kennedy administration had been trying to kill. And there were also the pro and anti uh, Castro Cubans. Everybody had a problem with JFK and the Cuban community, it seemed like at that time. And um, the U.S. military wasn't happy with JFK. They thought that uh, JFK actually encouraged the making of Seven Days in May, the movie about a, a coup in the United States by the military, because he was worried it could happen to him. So I think on November 23rd, the Kennedy administration would have had one hell of a meeting where they tried to figure out who might have been behind it. And so that's, I guess that's how I would answer that. Now, with a publicized attempt at assassination, wouldn't that also have helped the situation going forward in terms of legislation? I have a slightly different view of that. I, I think that what would have happened is that investigations would still have been launched. I mean, this is a rock in the pool. I mean, think about it. Let's, let's just think about it. The American people wake up with John Kennedy on November 23rd, and they're saying someone tried to execute the president in broad daylight on a public street. That has a way of focusing your attention on things. And you want answers. Well, how do you get answers? You got to have investigations. So the same thing that happened in our timeline would have happened. Only John Kennedy would have been sitting in office and they would have been discussing who should be investigating this. And a lot of people would have wanted to investigate it. The Dallas people would have said, hey, this is a local homicide. You know, if other people were dead, they'd say it was an attempted murder of the president, but we treat it as an attempted homicide. So there's Dallas. There's also uh, the FBI investigations. And of course, uh, Hoover was no friend of the Kennedys. Congress would have been all over this trying to investigate it. And it may very well be that the White House would have thought maybe we should investigate it so that we can sort of put a stop to some of these other investigations. So the thing about investigations is they're a little dangerous because you turn over one rock and you find something that you didn't expect. And sometimes in an investigation, you find things uh, that have nothing to do with the original investigation and, and you have to follow those and they lead to their own conflicts. So your question is a good one in that it you do kind of think, well, hey, people would have just felt bad for him. But I, I think it would have gone in a slightly different direction. I think there'd be massive goodwill. But remember, we'd be going into Thanksgiving and Christmas of 63. And it, that would be not the time to be passing legislation anyway, There, but there'd be a big hullabaloo about finding out who was behind it. You'd still have Lee Harvey Oswald running around there, but you'd have also people asking uh, who else might have been involved? Because it was a very live uh, question in our own timeline as to whether he acted alone or not. And it certainly would have been in my alternate timeline. So therefore, we kind of forget about this. We have the holiday cheer the following year. Kennedy is obviously going to want to move on his legislative agenda. So how does it fare? As you say, we had the martyr factor. We had LBJ being a wizard and whipping legislators together. Would the Kennedys have relied on LBJ for that? Well, I, I let me back up a little bit. I I, I think that it's quite possible uh, that yes, he would have had a legislative agenda. But remember, 1964 was an election year, and election years do not tend to be the years. Uh, that sitting presidents get to enact legislative agendas. They're looking for a victory so that they can come back with a mandate and, and talk about it. So I think 64 might have been a period of the, the shadow zone, the twilight zone, where uh, between the assassination attempt and, and in any attempt at getting back to normalcy, it would have been uh, a discussion of um, – you know, of the of the election and and clearly in, in, in surrounded by enemies, for example, uh, even the uh, idea of the assassination attempt in Dallas becomes a bit of an issue uh, between Kennedy and Goldwater. And, and uh, you know, there's a lot of things I've tried to put into the book that if you think about them, as you read them, you say, yeah, that that, that might really have happened that way. And I, and I think that is what I'm going for. I, if I could just for one minute also just say this is not something I woke up on, uh, you know, 
January 1st of 2013 and said, man, there's a 50th anniversary come up. I better uh, better take advantage of this. I've been working on this thing for 10 years uh, and and I've been putting all my energy into trying to figure out how to tell this story successfully. So it's been quite a quite a journey for myself. It's going to be very complicated trying to put this together. So basically upset nobody for 1964, get reelected and use 1965 to push through or begin to push through his legislation. But at the end of the day, and we have a minute before we break for our next segment, at the end of the day, would we have seen a Civil Rights Act, Medicare, all the great achievements, had Kennedy survived? And maybe you can start painting the picture of what you expect right now, and we'll pick it up in another... Well, and the other thing I want to uh, caution us against, I mean, part of the fun of reading Surrounded by Enemies is just seeing, you know, how these things would have potentially laid out. But but I, what I'd rather put out as the answer to the, the legislative agenda issue is this. If people tried to execute a guy in broad daylight on a public street and then failed, then what would happen? The people who were being shot at, in this case, John Kennedy, would say, I got to do a better job of protecting myself. I need to increase security. So now you got security around the president of the United States that you didn't have before Dallas, which makes him physically safer. I mean, obviously, everybody in the administration would have been paranoid about protecting his personal safety. If there were conspirators, and I believe there were, these people would have said uh, they wouldn't have just given up. Okay, we we shot at the guy and we missed, but they'd have had to cover their tracks. They'd have had to say, what are we going to do next? I'll tell you what we're going to do next. We're going to have this announcement. All right. And then we'll find out what those conspirators might have done. Bryce Sable joins Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Hi, this This is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Time and time again. You need to come here and help us. We need assistance. Please. Those we should be able to depend on let us down. Federal and state and local officials saying help is on the way. Will the folks here in Bell Harbor say show me? Don't depend on the government to save you. Take action now so that you're prepared for the next disaster with MyPatriotSupply.com. Get the best prices on storable food, non-GMO seeds, water filtration devices, home canning equipment, survival and self-reliance books, and more at MyPatriotSupply.com. Call 866-229-0927. We are hurting down here, and we need help immediately. Before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com. MyPatriotSupply.com. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Gene and Chris on the Paracast, joined by Bryce Zabel. What if Kennedy had survived? He's got enemies who tried to kill him. He's trying to get reelected. He's got this legislative agenda. He's not having a good time. He's also not very well. All this conspiring to what end, Bryce? Yeah. 
I think that the um, the Kennedy uh, administration would have uh, battened down the hatches a little bit from a security point of view. I mean, I think security would have been a very prominent part of uh, of every decision, including how they fought the uh, 1964 election. But uh, going back to the issue of the conspirators, somebody put in motion an assassination attempt on the president. In this alternative timeline, it fails. Does that mean they give up? No. It means they continue to uh, cover up their tracks and uh, try to make sure that they themselves are not held accountable. But that doesn't mean they give up on John Kennedy. But I would submit you might look to, uh, to think of it this way. You may not be able to assassinate a man physically, but there are other ways to assassinate a person. We've got the, uh, uh, the phrase character assassination. I think that's a pretty valid way to look at this. And the other thing uh, about that is that John Kennedy, uh, more than most presidents, I think, uh, have been living a secret life in both personal and professional ways that would have given his enemies, his mortal enemies, uh, the opportunity to do him harm with his own behavior. His own risky behavior could have been used against him. And uh, that's kind of a world that I explore in uh, in depth in uh, Surrounded by Enemies, which, by the way, people want to know more about it. They can go to surroundedbyenemies.com and uh, check that out. Who would have uh, become his new uh, his new secret lover? Of course, uh, the Mar- Marilyn Monroe relationship and and um, affair is fairly well known about now. And there's some question whether there were other affairs going on. Where do you come down on that particular part of his his life? Would he have been able to continue having these uh, these secret liaisons with movie stars and and uh, you know, office workers, that sort of thing. Well, it's a good question, Chris, and whether he continued it or not, the the answer is, uh, I don't think it's a much of a debate anymore, whether, whether he had been doing this. I mean, I think it's very well established that, that he had many, many uh, different uh, lovers and that uh, his marriage was certainly, whether Jackie wanted it to be an open marriage or not, he certainly uh, acted as if it was. It isn't just Marilyn Monroe. I mean, I th- I think if you started counting up the number of women that Jack Kennedy slept with, it's many, many, many. And uh, and I I wouldn't say that all of them. You know, this person's private life. I think we're all pretty pretty willing to say that's that's his life. It's hypocrisy that bothers us sometimes. And also, I th- I think we don't really care about. Uh, who he might have been sleeping with or wasn't sleeping with uh, prior to becoming president. But when you're president and you're having prostitutes brought into the White House or when you're sleeping with uh, multiple of the White House interns or when you're having uh, movie stars or mobster girlfriends or uh, Eastern European women who might be spies brought into the White House, using people that work for the White House uh, to to facilitate and enable this behavior. And then you tell the Secret Service that they're not allowed to even check the purses of these people who are being brought to see the president. Uh, I think that that uh, it becomes a matter of public uh, concern because these people certainly at the very minimum expose the president to blackmail, but they could also kill him. Uh, who's to say there's not a poisoned hypodermic in one of those uh, purses. I mean, a lot of issues uh, really bother the Secret Service about about this behavior. They were concerned that they weren't able to protect uh, the president very well. Now, granted, they didn't do a very good job in Dallas, but they certainly weren't being allowed by the president himself to do a very good job in terms of the people that were the strangers, if you will, that were being brought into the White House. So listen, he had a lot to account for in terms of the number of women. And I, I don't say that the number of women is a problem per se, although I think the uh, morality of the time would have been absurdly shocked by the numbers of women, uh, particularly since the nation loved Jackie Kennedy and would have felt uh, if they'd heard about this, they would have felt very strongly that uh, he'd done her wrong. I get the impression what you're telling me without doing any spoilers on the book very much, that there'd be a lot of damage control or efforts at damage control to keep things from happening. But that may have made a pretty mixed second term, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think it would. And, and, you know, I appreciate your, uh, there is a, there is a bit of spoiler in that I, I do want people to really enjoy this book and I want them to see the, the, the logic of certain things that might've happened. Let me respond to what you just uh, said by telling a personal anecdote. When I said that I'd been working on this, this uh, book, this project for over 10 years. When I first got the idea, it was about 2003. And, and uh, 
one of the things that had sort of made me consider this is when I first got into the television business, uh, I had a, a mentor uh, who, and, and I'm not going to bring up his name right now, but it was his last television series that he worked on. And it was my first television series. And so he kind of told me how to, how to produce the TV series. And he was a great guy and a wonderful friend. And he actually had partied with the Rat Pack. He had partied with JFK. He had partied with all these guys. He was at parties, told me one story once that uh, kind of blew me away. It was at a party where uh, it was during the uh, Democratic National Convention of 1960, where JFK had just been nominated or was about to be nominated. Marilyn came to a party at Peter Lawford's house. JFK was there and it, Marilyn and JFK disappeared into the back. They came back. She was wearing his shirt. And this was hours later. And obviously they, you know, whatever they were doing. And, and JFK was actually, I, you know, I, well, I, you know what? I won't go any further. I, I don't want to compromise the story too much, but he told me things about his, the behavior that he observed with JFK that I said, damn, if, if this was public, I can't see how this would not be a huge problem for the man. So that's kind of where I started to think about this thing. And then I worked out the story and I brought it to my friend and said, what do you think of this? And he said, oh, please don't, don't do this. And I said, why? And he said, JFK was a great guy. You don't want to do this. You don't want to talk about this stuff. And my friend died last year, sadly. And I felt like I waited long enough not to do it uh, out of deference to his, his um, feelings. And, and now I felt like with the 50th anniversary coming up, it would be okay to talk about it. But I, I do think that my friend made very real to me the, the kind of uh, uh, cognitive dissonance that, that existed in the public mind between the JFK they thought who uh, was their president and the way he actually lived his private life. And I just thought that, that is, uh, as a dramatist, that's a pretty juicy story. All right. So talking about the legislative achievements, though, would we have had a Civil Rights Act of 1965? Would we have had Medicare? Oh, I think, think certain things. I listen. I think that when you talk alternative timelines, uh, there are certain larger events that seem to be uh, that that you know that can be missed by a few details and and years and so forth. Let's take civil rights. I know that's an important one. Uh, the the arc of history is in favor of civil rights legislation occurring in the 1960s. Well, Bobby Whether was really involved. Yeah. Bobby was a, really a, a prime mover and, and really in a major player in getting that legislation passed. Of course. And so I, I guess my answer is whether it was JFK surviving in my timeline or LBJ taking the reins in our timeline, uh, civil rights legislation would have passed uh, maybe not in 64 uh, because uh, of the, the martyr uh, effect, but certainly during the 60s, the essence of civil rights legislation would have been passed. Um, the essence of um, Medicare would have been passed. Uh, th those are just certain issues that probably uh, are moving forward. I think the bigger question uh, about where Kennedy is a pivot point in history might very well be Vietnam. That seems to be very clear that he had certain agendas about Vietnam that he would have uh, addressed in a second term that he was not addressing in a first term that were different from how Lyndon Johnson viewed the war. We'll get into the implications of the Vietnam War in our next segment. Bryce Zabo is going to tell us what would have happened if Kennedy had survived the assassination attempt. With Gene and Chris, you're in The Paracast. So here's what happened. I was placing an order online. The site went down. It just stopped responding. It took hours before it returned, but I'd already placed the order with another company. If your site goes down, you could lose business. And if you have a business or personal site, you'll want to know it's easy to run and it will stay online. At iWeb, your site is hosted on one of the most reliable networks in the world. Check it out. iWeb.com. That's iWeb.com. 
First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there's The Coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors. Find out more at rockoids.com. That's rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Cold and flu season. (laughs) But don't worry. HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta-glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA four-herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. And don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain, normally $26.95, now just $20. Herbalhealer.com also offers correspondence course to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu-fighting products. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. With Gene and Chris in the Paracast, we have Bryce Sable telling us about an alternate timeline, a fascinating journey into what might have been. So the story we heard, I guess the official story, is that Kennedy might have pulled us out of Vietnam at least insofar as what he was possibly planning to do before he died. But what really happened? What would have happened had he survived? It's very clear that Kennedy did not believe uh, that you could win a land war in Asia. Uh, But he felt that he had already was alienating his uh, military advisors and so forth. He was kind of a peacenik by 1963. He was making peace with the Soviets uh, as best he could. He had the nuclear test ban treaty. So he was not wild about pursuing Vietnam, but he told several people that it would have to wait until his second term. And it seems clear that that John Kennedy would have found a way 
out of going into Vietnam had he been reelected, whereas Lyndon Johnson felt differently on the subject and was more prone to listen to the military advisors about the need to do it. So I well, what was Johnson's I, first act upon becoming president. I think he signed off on some huge uh, helicopter contract with Bell Helicopters. Oh, he, he? he signed off on. Yes, he did. He also remember uh, the Gulf of Tonkin happened during uh, his his term during the uh, the election campaign, and he was happy to get the Gulf of Tonkin endorsement. Uh, from the from the U.S. Congress, I, my time frame though is slightly different. I, I feel like it's and this is where we fall into. Remember earlier, I had said when you get to alternative histories, that they fall with JFK into two forms. One is the time travel sci-fi version that Stephen King has just done, but the other is kind of the rose-colored glasses where. If it's just as if there was a, an essential continuum of time where JFK runs for office, gets reelected, and continues to pursue, as you guys have been talking about, the legislative agenda. But that's not how I see it. I, I don't think one bounces back from the investigations into a potential execution of your leader on a on a public street in broad daylight, as I've said. And so I don't think the rose-colored glasses fit. I think that in a second term – the reverberations, the ripples in the uh, pool from uh, Dallas, Texas, even a failed assassination attempt would have kept the Kennedy administration uh, somewhat occupied and off balance. Ask yourself this, uh, how how concerned was Richard Nixon about his legislative agenda when he was fighting his rear guard action against Watergate. You know, you've, you've got to survive first. So I do think that there would have been a political conflict brewing in 1965 that would have dragged the president into it. And quite likely, he would have had to devote a lot of his uh, time and uh, his associates' time with trying to preserve political viability and survivability. And so it's not as simple as just continuing the timeline as if Dallas didn't happen. To me, Dallas still becomes a watershed moment and has to be dealt with and, and would have been dealt with in the, a Kennedy second term. So if we look at it that way, at the end of the second term, we're looking at Kennedy's administration's success. Is it all mediocre as a result, as a result of being tied down with these other issues? What about his secret life? Do you depict that at being revealed at some point? We're getting into definite spoiler territory here. Okay, I don't uh, want to get too far No, that's into that, okay. But... I mean, I, I can, no, unless I'm just kidding, but uh, I'll okay. answer anything we want to talk about. But but I I, I think that your question raises uh, s several assumptions. Uh, one is that he finishes his term. I mean, that's not necessarily clear. There were issues that could have prevented that. Also, the revelation of uh, his secret life. If you think about um, revelations, there's a continuum of revelations. On one side, it's full disclosure, and another is limited modified hangout, right? So I think I would just say this. I think it is clear, and I've seen this from top historians, including people that have been Kennedy biographers like Robert Dalek, et cetera. Most historians today seem to agree that John Kennedy was living one sensational headline away from disaster. In surrounded by enemies, I will simply submit this. I'm willing to investigate what that looked like. I'm not going to ask you then whether he survives the term or not. But I'll <laughs> ask you this. Does, yeah. does LBJ become vice president in the second term? Well, let's, let's talk about LBJ for a minute. W remember what we were talking earlier about like, when the Kennedy clan assembled on November 23rd, 1963, and they were saying, who's behind this? I think somebody in the room might have said, does Lyndon have something to do with this? The Kennedys hated Lyndon. And they just thought they called them, you know, corn pone at, at his best. They, they just thought he was embarrassing. But they also uh, suspected darker things. And remember, Lyndon Johnson uh, on November 22nd, 1963, really was at his own personal uh fracture point. He was either probably going to go to jail over uh, the scandals with uh, Bobby Baker and Billy Saul Estes, or uh, he was going to become president. Because if he didn't become president, those investigations that were already underway into LBJ's affairs probably would have ousted him from office. LBJ is a central character in Surrounded by Enemies. What if Kennedy survived Dallas? That much I'll tell you. And 
the central issues surrounding LBJ are, number one, from the Kennedy point of view, can we trust the man? Uh, number two, whether we can trust him or not, can we politically keep him on the ballot? And uh, number three, if we think that he shouldn't be on the ballot, how do we get him off the ballot uh, in a way that doesn't do as much damage to us? And I would also say that it was one thing for John Kennedy to think about getting rid of uh, LBJ in our timeline, which he was certainly thinking about doing. In my timeline of Surrounded by Enemies, you remember now, it's the uh, Kennedy administration having just survived Dallas and asking and getting prepared to go to the, the country and saying, look, that was an aberration. Um, you got to stick with the new frontier. We're going to take this thing forward. And do you really want you know, a political consideration for the Kennedys then that they wouldn't have had if Dallas had not happened uh, would be, do we just look like the gang that couldn't shoot straight? We're getting shot at literally in Dallas. Uh, we're bumping vice presidents off tickets. Uh, we're taking the country toward nuclear war uh, up to the edge of nuclear war and the Cuban Missile Crisis. They had had a whole fascinating political way of looking at Lyndon Johnson that we don't see in our current timeline and that Kennedy didn't see on November 21st, 1963. So that's what I think is the most fun about Surrounded by Enemies is that I really let the, the reader go with the Kennedys as they work their way through the ripples from Dallas. And uh, that's what was so much fun for me to write. And, and I think it's also uh, kind of a brain puzzle. I don't expect, by the way, I don't expect you guys to agree with every decision that I make in the, in the book. And I certainly don't expect your readers to agree with every decision. I would just think that most people that read it will say, I can see that point of view and, and, and enjoy it from that point of view. Bryce Abel is author of Surrounded by Enemies, a lot more. What if Kennedy survived Dallas? How would history have changed? Just to let you know that next week we'll be featuring Colin Andrews, co-author with Cynthia Andrews of On the Edge of Reality. Lots more great stuff coming up with Gene and Chris. You're in The The Paracast. The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. G-C-N. Great talk radio starts here. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter, and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that, too, in Graphic Converter. Also, print catalogs convert from so many formats i can't even list them download now to see if graphic converter is good for you like one and a half million other users guess what you could save money when you buy graphic converter use the coupon code night owl use the coupon code night owl to get a special price for graphic converter go to lemkesoft.com that's l-e-m-k-e soft.com lemkesoft.com l-e-m-k-e soft.com Let's take care of your family and get it prepared and help us take care of our brothers and sisters in arms. From now through Veterans Day on November 11th, FreezeDryGuy.com is offering 10% off everything for active duty, reserve, and retired U.S. military members and their families. No proof necessary. It's on the honor system. In addition, for every purchase you make during this period, we'll make a donation to the Special Operations Warrior Foundation. Since retiring from the Army, the Freeze-Dry Guy has been your trusted source for freeze-dried food and dehydrated food, perfect for emergency preparedness and outdoor activities like camping. He's offering 10% off for active, reserve, and retired U.S. military and their families now through Veterans Day, plus donating to the Special Operations Warrior Foundation from every purchase. Call 866-404-3663, 866-404-FOOD, or go to freezedryguy.com, freezedryguy.com.
It's time for a home security quiz. What effective home security device is smaller than a coffee cup, fakes out burglars into thinking someone is home at your house while you're away, plugs into any wall outlet, is recommended by many police departments, and sells for less than $30? Yes, it's fake TV. This year, about one in every 50 U.S. homes will have a break-in, with burglars usually picking the easy target, a dark house that looks like no one is home. Fake TV is a small electronic security device that makes it look like someone is home watching TV by simulating the light from a real TV. Fake TV could be the difference between coming home to a secure house or one that's been ransacked. To get your fake TV for only $29.95 with free shipping, go to faketv.com or call 1-877-5-FAKE-TV. That's 877-532-5388 or go to faketv.com. Fake TV, the burglar deterrent. A healthy digestive system supports a healthy immune system. And a healthy immune system protects you against infections and disease. Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse, available at Terragonics.com, is the key to digestive health. Pro-EM1 is a powerful liquid probiotic and is gentle enough to use every day. Pro-EM1 contains three groups of beneficial microbes and enzymes to cleanse and remove toxins, supports weight loss, improves absorption of food nutrients, and aids in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 one is dairy, wheat, and soy free, is non-GMO, has all natural certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is never freeze-dried. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Terraganix.com. Or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Pro-EM1, the raw probiotic. Hi, my name is Richard Dolan. You're listening to the Paracast. Bryce Abel joining us. We're trying to figure out what would have happened if Kennedy had survived Dallas. And it sounds like the wolves would be surrounding him. Well, that's why it's called Surrounded by Enemies. Uh, Listen, I could have written a nice safe title that just, I could have just written a book called What If Kennedy Lived? It's called Surrounded by Enemies because the truth of the matter in, in the early 60s, John Kennedy was, in fact, loved by many, many people, but he was also hated by many, many people. And a lot of the many, many people that hated him had guns. I think that the Kennedys would have retreated behind the now secured walls of the White House and thought to themselves that they were surrounded by enemies and they would have uh, had to think very carefully about every single move they did. So you talk legislative agenda, that's all well and good. You can't implement a legislative agenda if you're afraid that the nation is going to be at risk of a coup, if you think that you're going to be killed. Uh, you, you, know, you just have to get security first. And, and I don't think it's crazy to think that the Kennedys would have thought that Dallas meant that the entire nation was at risk. Because remember, I think it's a fascinating Hollywood kind of thing, but let's talk about the movie Seven Days in May. Before it was a movie, it was a book by Fletcher Knebel and a very popular book. And Kennedy liked it. And he told friends publicly, or not publicly, he told friends privately that he felt that it could happen. And it would take two or three Bay of Pigs-like events to make it happen. And he was dedicated to not giving his opponents that opportunity, but he was concerned about it. He was so concerned about the scenario of a military takeover in seven days in May that he actively encouraged John Frankenheimer to make that movie. And when Frankenheimer and the film crews needed to shoot at the White House, Kennedy actually on a couple of occasions, went to another location outside of Washington, D.C., to either Hyannisport or to Palm Beach, so that the White House had different security uh, issues around it, and they could issue film permits. Now, that's a guy that wanted to get a message out. And I submit the message he was putting out was, don't let this happen here. All right, but we're looking at LBJ. Okay. And this is the guy that they don't trust. Do you suggest that he was one of the people who might have been in part responsible for the assassination attempt. It just seems so obvious in the real world that he would have been. 
Well, let me put it this way. I want to suggest that the scenario you're talking about is dealt with and surrounded by enemies. I don't want to go too much beyond that because I think it, it's more complex. And if I just answer that question straight out, um, I'll do an injustice to the book. And I, I, I don't think I should do that. But I, I do think I'd like to just back up a section on that question. It is certainly a new way of thinking about the Kennedy assassination in the last 10 years or so, where more and more people are saying, I wonder if LBJ either was involved in the planning or uh, at least knew it was happening. There are people that talk about that. There's a couple of books. Uh, there's more than a couple of books out right now. One of them is from Barr McClellan, uh, who I believe was the father of uh, Scott McClellan, who was the press secretary for President Bush. So there are people talking about it. And certainly Johnson's behavior, uh, when looked at from that framework is suspicious. I mean, I'll give you one example. Uh, there's a, a photo frame of a larger picture that was cropped in the evidence given to the Warren Commission. But in the uncropped photo, you see JFK's car and you also see Johnson's car, two cars back. It goes JFK's car, Secret Service car, Johnson's car. In Johnson's car, before the shot has caused anyone else to react, is disappeared from the car. You can barely see the man. He is scooting so low in the back seat. Now, why? Well, I mean, the answer was supposedly that he was trying to listen to um, a walkie-talkie from uh, the, the, the Secret Service agent Roy Kellerman uh, had let him listen to. And he'd been doing that during the entire thing. But, you know, to the conspiracy minded, you could say, well, I'll tell you why he was scooting so low that you can't even see him in the car because he knew he's the shots were going to fly. So there is a lot of that. I have tried to write a book that is informed by that kind of speculation and interest. That's the way I'd answer that, I guess. All right. Let's just go beyond that a little bit. At the end of his term, does he leave in disgrace? Does he leave it open for his successor to have a fairly successful term? Does Johnson run? Is there somebody else? Does Richard Nixon <laughs> You know, listen, uh, to, to answer again. that, Gene, I think you can appreciate this. If I answer that question straight out right now, I've told somebody how the book actually ends and that I, I can't do. But I will say this. Um, everything um, comes to an end uh, because, uh, you know, Kennedy has to leave the, the White House one way or the other and and somebody else has to take over. Uh, I, I'm not going to spoil how that my particular alternate history works out, but I, but I do think it's, it's clear that uh, even if that the, the only way, let, let's answer the alternative. Let's say that Dallas didn't happen. It never happened. And, uh, and JFK uh, survived and ran for office. I think clearly uh, he probably would have, kept things pretty much under control. He would have got a lot of that legislative agenda that you're talking about implemented, and he would have served out his term, and he probably would have batted away a few investigations into his uh, personal life. That's what I would say would be the rose-colored glasses look. Uh, I'm not telling that story. I'm telling the story where Dallas did happen, and it sent out those ripples and tied up the Kennedy administration in dealing with the aftermath of those ripples, uh, while also trying to conduct the nation's business, while also trying to keep the private, personal, and uh, professional life private. And uh, that, that gets a little uh, messy. I mean, politics is messy. And what I think a lot of people, when they consider if Kennedy lived, is they, they don't consider the mess uh, of politics. They don't consider that historically, a lot of second terms don't go so well. Think about um, Richard Nixon's second term, pretty much a bad, bad case. Lyndon Johnson couldn't even get to a second term. Uh, Obama's second term right now looks to be uh, a lot bumpier than uh, you might have thought after his, uh, his victory. Bill Clinton's second term mm, still had a lot of bumps in it. He got impeached. You know, Bill Clinton got impeached in the second term. So I think the nation has a history where second terms are not simple affairs, where when people, when the voters give a, a president a second shot, they know that they're doing that because they like the guy or they like his policies, but they're getting a little less in return. They're not getting that era of good feelings when a person is first elected. Uh, it's going to get 
messy. And so I think Kennedy's second term, long way of answering your question, Kennedy's second term would have been probably messier than most, given Dallas and his own personal uh, secrets. What a world it may or may not have been. Let's look at the real world for a few moments about the Kennedy assassination, and then we'll get into some of our listener questions. And that is, what is your feeling in the real world, forgetting this book for the moment? We hope the book will be an incredible bestseller if it's not already. What do you think in the real world? Whom do you think was responsible for Kennedy's oh, assassination? Uh, well, let's. Uh, let, I, I, I will also add another suspect uh, be, to answer that question. We were talking earlier about who the Kennedys might have thought was behind this. The one group I left out was also the mob. Remember that um, the mob had... Um, was under attack by Bobby Kennedy during the 50s. And then when he became attorney general, uh, even though supposedly they helped JFK get elected, uh, they were trying to put them all in, in prison. So there's a lot of hatred by the mob. It, I, I think that the assassination is a complex issue. I will say there is a little pushback from people on the Oswald acted alone business right now. Having read all that I've read and knowing what I know, I just don't buy it. I, I'm, I'm willing to believe that Oswald possibly fired a, a weapon. That could have happened, but I don't think he did it by himself. And I think there were a lot of other people involved. We have Bryce Abel now speculating about who might have done the real event, the real assassination. With Gene and Chris, you're in The Paracast. The Paracast. America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there's The Coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors. Find out more at rockoids.com. That's rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. So here's what happened. I was placing an order online. The site went down. It just stopped responding. It took hours before it returned, but I had already placed the order with another company. If your site goes down, you could lose business. And if you have a business or personal site, you'll want to know it's easy to run and it will stay online. At iWeb, your site is hosted on one of the most reliable networks in the world. Check it out. iWeb.com. That's iWeb.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these specials. A 14 by 21 foot shop for under 6000 or a 50 by 100 for under 30000 You heard right. That's 5000 square feet under $30,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. An e-cig revolution is sweeping across the country. But is yours American-made? Vapriate e-liquid by LaSig is. Manufactured in Arkansas with 100% USA-sourced ingredients. And when you buy American, you support local jobs. Vapriate e-liquid by LaSig is top quality at an affordable price. The very principle that once drove the American economy. Get great taste with no ash, tar, or smoke. You'll be wondering why you didn't make the change to Vapriate e-liquid by LaSig a long time ago. LaSig.com has everything you need for beginners to the advanced vaping enthusiast with a wide variety of hardware and also imported e-liquid flavors as well. Plus, LaSig smokes the competition with fast, free, same-day shipping, real people customer service, and a 30-day satisfaction guarantee. Support our country and become a Vapriate at LaSig.com. 
or call 870-525-1440. 870-525-1440. LeSig e-cigarettes for today's modern smoker. Howdy, folks. Pharmacist Ben here, nutritional pharmacist and skincare chemist. If you've heard me on my daily health and wellness program, The Bright Side, you know I'm on a mission to spread the good news about the power of nutritional supplementation to correct your health care challenges and get you feeling vital and healthy once again. I want you to call 877-279-9422 and check out the powerful, affordable line of nutritional products from Longevity, the ones I take and the ones I recommend. That's 877-279-9422 or go to www.gcnminerals.com. Why simply mask your symptoms with toxic pharmaceutical drugs when you can address causes with vitamins and minerals? I suggest the Healthy Start Pack. It gives your body the essential 90 nutrients it needs. Most people notice a difference right away. You can sign up to help me spread the good news of health and wellness without drugs and maybe make a little money too. And while you're there, don't forget to check out my important video message. That's GCNminerals.com or call 877-279-9422. And remember, friends, good nutrition is good medicine. This is Kurt Seven, the author of UFO Mysteries, and you're listening to the Paracast. On the Paracast, we're looking at the real and fanciful mystery of the Kennedy assassination. Still, after all these years, so compelling. The book is surrounded by enemies. What if Kennedy survived Dallas? All the implications thereof. But now we're focusing on the real world, which is what actually happened? Who did it? Was it just Oswald or what? So you're suggesting here that maybe Oswald was one of those involved, one of the conspirators, but not the only one. I, I'm, I'm suggesting that I don't buy for a second that Oswald acted alone. That I, I do not buy. I'm willing, I will say that after 50 years, it, it is beginning to look like we'll never have that crystal clarity where we say, this guy did it. You know, we're not going to have the moment of Colonel Mustard did it in the drawing room kind of thing. We're, you know, we're not going to have that. But I do think that when people say in this 50th anniversary coverage, well, I guess we'll just never know. I don't buy that. I think we know that it was not Oswald acting alone. That I think we know. I think there were a lot of players in it, a lot of moving parts. And it does seem within the realm of possibility to me that the moving part that should not be ignored is the attempt to use the mob with uh, anti-Castro Cubans to assassinate Castro. Uh, That was a rather devilish concoction that the CIA was putting together. So you had CIA, mob, anti-Castro Cubans, all right? These are three groups that we know for a fact were operating together to try to murder Castro. It's not all that much of a stretch of the imagination to think that somehow rogue elements in the CIA working with these people turned the plot around on JFK. I I just don't see that as being all that unlikely as to whether we will ever get to the place where we can say, well, there were three shooters. The first one was here and the second one was there and the third one was there and they were hired by so-and-so and and, uh, they met on, you know, November 10th and did a rehearsal. And then we're never, I don't think we're going to get that where everybody reaches consensus about what happened. We're just going to have that overall feeling that it was a a dirty job, a, a dirty job done on the president of the United States. By the way, all this discussion we've we've had makes it almost sound like I'm down on JFK. I loved JFK. Uh, you know, I I respected uh, his political ambitions, uh, particularly his work for peace. I think the nation lost a great deal when we lost him. And so I am as angry as uh, I'm as angry as Oliver Stone uh, or anybody else that a conspiracy was put together to violently remove him from office. I think it's a national tragedy. And the reason it's so important on this 50th anniversary and why we're all paying attention to it and why you're doing this show and why I wrote Surrounded by Enemies is because it does matter. The fact that we have yet to acknowledge in a serious way that something really dirty and nasty happened on the streets of Dallas, Texas, uh, on November 22nd, 1963, that's a bad thing. And and to the extent that we can begin to acknowledge that, it is a better thing for our nation. So we look at the Warren Commission report, 
which would have whitewashed the thing anyway because people want closure and they wanted to get the thing out of the way. Then we have the congressional hearings in the late 70s where they say it was a conspiracy, and then it died. Isn't that strange? Well, did it die? Maybe it died officially. I don't think it's ever died in terms of the relentless, I, and I would call it patriotism, of certain researchers who, against all the odds and with all the obstacles thrown in their way, continue to research this. It's sort of, I, I do find myself admiring those researchers the same way I admire the researchers who have fought to remove the cover-up over Roswell. I mean, I think that there are certain things that are inspirational to have a, a researcher checking that out. So I agree with your point. The government has kind of thrown up its hands about the whole thing, and, and it's not likely to do anything different at this point. So uh, that that is true. Um, I do believe that if you look at why it's behaved the way it's behaved, uh, there are some explanations. The first explanation is, going back to the Warren Commission, Lyndon Johnson, whether he was involved or wasn't involved, certainly wanted the Warren Commission to kind of wave away uh, this the, the scent of conspiracy. Uh, and, and he literally had gone to various people, including Earl Warren, to try to get them to, to run the commission and said, look, we can't afford to have people thinking there was a conspiracy uh, from the Soviet Union to uh, take out the president, we'll be having a global nuclear war. So his whole take was, why don't you guys pin this on a lone nut so that we can get on with the nation's business and not go to Armageddon? So I don't know whether that was, uh, you know, I, I think it was more than that, but at the least it was that. And then even the House uh, committee in the, in the late 70s that said there were probably two gunmen was not clear on who those gunmen were over the course of time. One of their prime pieces of evidence about it, which was the dicta, I mean, the uh, dicta belt recordings from the motorcycle officer. Now that evidence has been attacked. So the people who need to keep this imprecise have continued to do their job over the years to the point that, again, the, the media, and, and I don't blame everybody in the media, but certainly those uh, reporters that are catching the Kennedy assassination story for like the first time and they get to go out and spend two or three days working on it. Those are the ones who, uh, well, let me put it this way. I, I used to be a CNN correspondent and there's a kind of coverage that we often did, which is what I called the some say yes, some say no, we say maybe coverage. It's the safest thing. You get one guy who says one thing, you get one guy who says another thing, and then you say, who's really ever going to know? And the position I here is not to take a position is to basically get involved in the cop out. That's right. So where I really where I really lay the blame on this is where is the national news organization with stature uh, and respectability, if you will? Where is that organization that really takes the issues like the Kennedy assassination on, really d dig deep into it for a sustained period, put some money into it, put some resources into it, and take a position. Where's that? That's what's been missing over the years. It's the same thing that's been missing on Roswell. Again, whenever anyone covers Roswell, all they say is, well, you know, those goofy UFO buffs, you know, and, and, and now it's the same thing with Kennedy. It's like, well, you know, those conspiracy buffs. And I, all I got to say is, you're not a buff uh, if, if you're looking into an honest-to-God conspiracy to assassinate the president or to cover up the, the truth of extraterrestrial life. That doesn't make you a buff. And in fact, the guy who first said that was George Carlin. He, he, there's a great rant of his on YouTube where he goes, why do you call these people buffs? And I, I agree with that. The media has been very complicit in uh, marginalizing people that are trying to do good work on difficult subjects. All right, but the big question is here, will we ever get an answer with regard to the Kennedy assassination? I mean, uh, if we people have the within answer. the government know what happened, how long do they keep it from us? I, they will forever. Uh, you know, uh, it, the, the, whatever gets released now, I mean, maybe there's some more stuff to be released, as, as they say, but, but the stuff that, that won't be released is the stuff that's already been uh, burned and shredded and, and isn't there anymore. Uh, I, I would just argue, though, we, if we're waiting for the moment when 
the dots, uh, the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed on who did what, that's not going to come. Yeah, but I no do way. believe that we are going to, that we have already achieved, uh, in my view, a compelling case for a conspiracy. So in that regard, uh, I do think that we should see more of that. But I, one thing I wanted to just point out, this isn't just the big bad government. It is that, but it is also the complicity of the media in not getting deeply into something like this. And, and this is fascinating, you, you know, in uh, 1965, uh, there was a book uh, written called uh, The Death of the President by William Manchester. All right. And William Manchester, uh, it's, it was considered the, you know, the, just a, a powerfully important book in, in, at that time. The Kennedys got a chance to review the manuscript and a great amount of that was excised and, and of what was excised by, uh, by agreement between Manchester and the Kennedys, it will not be released until 2067. Now that has nothing to do with the government. That is an agreement between Manchester and the Kennedys. Now, uh, what I think that material that was excised largely is about is about the behavior of Lyndon Johnson, et cetera, Im immediately before, during, and after the assassination. And uh, the Kennedys excised a lot of it. You can ask yourself questions about why they did that, but they did. And I'll tell you what we are going to do right now. I'll tell you what we are going to do. Yeah. Not excise the following. We have Bryce Zabel joining Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Paracast. Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, then carting to a private bank, having it lent back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. There is only one detox product that stands out above the rest. Micro Plant Powder. And it's available only at HempUSA.org. Micro Plant Powder does wonders by removing toxins from the body. Detoxification is a vital process that's extremely important for restoring your health. Micro Plant Powder is available in eight different formulations, and we can help you choose the one that's perfect for your lifestyle. Micro Plant Powder is 100% chemical-free, non-GMO, anti-inflammatory, gluten-free, and packaged by hand in BPA-free containers. HempUSA.org wants you to be healthy, and Micro Plant Powder is one of the best ways we know to detoxify your body from head to toe, all for about $10 a month. Take back your life and enjoy living again with Micro Plant Powder. Call 888-910-4367. That's 888-910-4367. Micro Plant Powder, available only at HempUSA.org. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now... Here's Gene Steinberg. With Gene and Chris, we're back here with the Paracast twins, Bryce Abel and Chris O'Brien. And we're going to release their greatest hits album where for <laughs> 10 minutes they say the Paracast, the Paracast. It must be like a Yoko Ono record. I can't wait. That is an artistic statement, Chris. I think that you and I have made and will stand forever. You yeah. have to be in a certain mental framework. Yeah. That and the I'm healing balloon. You mentalize your mind to be able to listen to that. You know, it's you like know by the way, guys, uh, on, the, on the topic of that, there's a really funny, interesting 
YouTube video where all it is is a person saying back and to the left, back and to the left, over and over and over, uh, because that's the phrase from uh, Oliver Stone's JFK, where Kevin Costner is talking about the Zapruder hit, where you right. see the Kennedy uh, Kennedy hit, and. So, yeah, Chris, we'll just have to do our version of the Paracast. You know, I'm thinking here of the old Mothers of Invention song where for I don't know how many minutes they keep saying cream cheese, cream cheese, Jeez. cream cheese. It's, yeah, well, it's our mantra. That's what, by the way, uh, speaking of music, I just wanted to point out this book is not all just downbeat. There's some pretty fun stuff. Uh, the Beatles are in yeah, it. You, you would think, uh, yeah, the Beatles, the Beatles meet JFK uh, the Beatles in this kind book. of. One theory that uh, that has been bannered about for years pertaining to the Beatles, uh, just incredibly um, tumultuous and instantaneous popularity in this country was as a direct result of the assassination of a young, vibrant president. And uh, it, it would be interesting to to kind of what if and think, well, well it's, if he had survived, would the Beatles have uh, had uh, as much of an impact? I think they would have because I think that was a cultural thing uh, that was primed and teed up and ready to go, but it was certainly uh, a relief for the nation. But uh, in, in Surrounded by Enemies, the, um, the Kennedy uh, literally goes to the Ed Sullivan show uh, to meet the Beatles for reasons that are political. And I'll, I'll let your reader, let your listeners and my readers uh, enjoy that. But one thing that the book does that I think is so much fun is I commissioned a graphic artist and we created five uh, authentic looking uh, news magazine covers from this alternative history. And one of them shows JFK uh, with the Beatles on the uh, Ed Sullivan show uh, and talks about that wacky 1964 election starting. It's really a great piece of art in its own right. Uh, Linda Carr is the graphic artist and they're all really fun. So I hope people will enjoy that in the book as well. They're easiest to see in the ebook because they just are, you know, brilliant color renditions. Yeah, we do have a number of questions from our listeners at forum.theparacast.com. Uh, this first one, I think a lot of our listeners would like to know. This is from Techno Mage T, and he asks, do you cover any UFO-related issues in your book? You know, uh, let me just say this about that. Um, I had a decision to make, and since I've made such a uh, profound connection between Kennedy and UFOs in dark skies, uh, I mean, 22 hours worth of programming, uh, talking about it. Uh, I, and, and I've written a book, AD After Disclosure, that mentions it. I really felt that uh, I needed to have a separate take uh, in this book. And so the answer is no. Uh, it's not that it couldn't have gone on in this alternative history. I just don't talk about it in this alternate history in the same way that if, if, if it really did happen in our timeline, let's face it, JFK. Uh, certainly wasn't going to be talking to too many people about it. And and so it doesn't come up in this book. I, I, I hope people will understand that uh, I, what I was trying to do is reach a different kind of uh, uh, audience with a different kind of material here. Um, although I do think we could probably fill uh, at least part of a, a show talking about JFK and UFOs and the possibility. So um, I'm sorry to disappoint if that's a disappointment, but uh, then I would recommend please watch Dark Skies again. Okay, I have another couple of questions uh, from Techno Mage T. Uh, he wants to know if, do you also spend time talking about how Kennedy surviving Dallas would affect uh, world events? He gives the example, it's possible uh, Khrushchev, Khrushchev would have still been in power, which after 50 years, I doubt they're uh, uh, techno. But uh, how how much of the Absolutely. effect on world events do you, do you really dwell on? A Absolutely. Uh, uh, techno, techno Mage T, that sounds like quite a name. Um, uh, yes. Uh, and, and on the subject of Khrushchev, I mean, I don't think this, I don't, wouldn't call a spoiler. I think that uh, when the arc of history is interrupted, so Kennedy survives uh, in, in Surrounded by Enemies, that triggers the survival of Khrushchev uh, through the, uh, you know, the, in our timeline, Brezhnev replaced him. That doesn't happen in that timeline. I'm not saying he's in charge. He's not in charge now, but uh, he, he certainly could have survived through 64 and 65 and, and, and maybe even a few years longer than that. It is a part of the book. Uh, Kennedy does go to the Soviet Union in my book. Um, 
as, as he intended to do. And they even talk about the moon. So there are things in it uh, that, that are changed by the history. Okay, here's, here's another question. I'm going to put a little addendum to the end of it. Which sources did you use in your research? He gives the example of Jim Mars and James Douglas. And I would add, if someone is interested in the Kennedy assassination, who's at the top of your list to recommend uh, in terms of their work? That's a good question. Who are my sources? Well, uh, I'm sitting here in an office right now surrounded by about 75 Kennedy books. Uh, so uh, my, my sources are, are, are everybody's, uh, I guess. But I do think Jim Mars has written a terrific book. I guess one source that I don't recommend too highly is the Warren Commission report, which I think is one of the greatest works of uh, American <laughs> fiction of the last century. But I also I do agree that that was a great um, the James Douglas book, uh, JFK and the Unspeakable is very good. Books I don't particularly think do a very good job are like Vincent Bugliosi's Reclaiming History. Uh, I don't think he did a really good job with that. No. Um, I think there's been some other ones that I, I, I found some inspiration and certainly Seymour Hersh's uh, Dark Side of Camelot kind of knocked the door open for some of this stuff. Crossfire is really a, a great book. I understand this new version of it. Um, in terms of just JFK uh, history, uh, there's some great ones. Uh, you know, I, a lot of uh, the good guys like, uh, you know, Dalek's done good work and things like that. In terms of the conspiracy ones, um, you know, there's Henry Hertz written uh, Reasonable Doubt. And, uh, well, that, there's so many. Uh, Mark Lane, of course, you can't deny that. But I, you know, I'll tell you something. When I, talk, when I talk about my sources, it's really interesting how I wrote this book because it does go to that question. While I was writing every day, um, I would I would spend part of my day writing and the rest of the day when I would go, I go for like two hour walks. I would listen to Kennedy books uh, uh, on my headphones while I was walking. I would come home and read from three or four different books for like uh, 30 minutes at a time. And what was happening is I was just trying to create this sort of neural web, you know, in my head, whatever you want to call it, where the unrelated things from these different unrelated sources began to relate in my head through the idea of this book. That sounds kind of crazy, I guess, but, but it really worked for me. Things that other people had not seen as existing at the same time did exist. It's something I did during Dark Skies trying to lay out the timeline for that, where I would figure out the timeline of events from Time and Newsweek and then cross-reference them with uf ufological events. It's, it's really a, a, an interesting way to write, and I, I enjoyed doing that. Now, you're asking, and then your final part of your question was, wh what would I recommend? Uh, gosh, I think, I think you have to start with a basic, and I think Crossfire has stood the test of time pretty good. Uh, there's yeah. some things even the Jim Mars would probably want to want to want to change about it. It's not perfect, but it but it's good. And uh, I, I I guess I would I guess I would start there. I also know that there's a couple of really uh, just good Kennedy. If you're not talking about the assassination, but about the Kennedy administration, there's uh, some really good ones. I just listened to one that I thought was really terrific, uh, even though it doesn't do much about the assassination. It's Thurston Clark's book, uh, The Last Hundred Days, of uh, JFK's Last Hundred Days. And he does a wonderful job of putting you in the mind frame of JFK in that last hundred days so that you can see what he might have done in another thousand days. And at the same time, tells you through those hundred days what he had done previously. It's a masterful telling. I really recommend that highly. We recommend this highly, and we'll let you listen to it. With Gene and Chris, we have Bryce Sable joining us. You're in the Paracast. Neighbors, are you tired of dealing with a slow web hosting provider? Well, check out A2 Hosting and their screaming fast Swift server platform. They even have SSDs that load pages 300% faster than the competition. Ready to give your site a speed boost? Well, tell you what, neighbors, head on over to a2hosting.com. That's A2, that's number two, a2hosting.com. Check out their Prime Hosting account. And get this, neighbors, they're even giving you an exclusive 25% off discount for all our listeners. 25%. And remember, their Guru Crew support team is standing by 24-7, 365 days a year to answer any of your questions. Now, to get the discount, 
Use the coupon code GENE when you check out. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Great news, pure water lovers. BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com has a special discount offer for all GCN listeners. You can't do better than a Big Berkey for economy. For only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. There's none better than a Big Berkey for emergency preparedness as a backup water source. And you just can't beat a Big Berkey to remove dangerous chlorine, all types of fluoride, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, parasites, and unhealthy bio- products from municipal water. Berkey water filter systems are even powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. For the gold standard in water filters, get a Big Berkey at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And all GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. For details, call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey water filters for the love of clean water. My name's Bruno. I'm 52 years old. I've tried different protein powders over the years, and they've all tasted pretty bad. I tried One World Whey and found it to be delicious. After 10 weeks on One World Whey, my wife commented, you have more muscles and you're leaner than when you were 20 years old. My body has changed dramatically. I'm a cyclist. Normally, I'll ride two days on and take two days off. After being on One World Whey, I rode 10 days in a row in over 100 degree heat, and then I take another two servings of One World Whey and then work out at the gym for another hour and a half. I just couldn't believe these results. My normal muscle tightness and soreness after working out are virtually gone. Don't take my word for it. One World Way comes in single servings. Just give it a try. For a health and taste sensation you'll love, call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit oneworldway.com. That's one world, W-H-E-Y dot com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Well, we've been exploring what might have happened had Kennedy survived an assassination attempt, but there's a lot more, of course, which is all about the Kennedy assassination. How can we learn more about that? My first exposure into those mysteries was listening to a series of lectures from Mark Lane. Then, of course, I read the book that he wrote, Rush to Judgment, because I remember how much detail he spent showing how this Italian rifle that Lee Harvey Oswald allegedly used, could not possibly accomplish the task. It was just a piece of crap. And he was an average marksman. How could he possibly do this? But then, of course, even somebody who's a bad baseball player will sometimes hit a home run. It's interesting that you say that, Gene, because in addition to everything you just said about that rifle and and Mark Lane, uh, the first Dallas policeman on the scene identified that rifle not as a Manlicher Carcano Italian piece of crap rifle, but as a German Mauser rifle, right. which was considerably a better rifle. And they they basically identified as that, stuck with that for, I think, a day or so before they were told or b- before then it was announced, oh, no, that was a mistake. It was the Manlicher Carcano that Lee Harvey Oswald had. So I, there's just so much detail out there. Mark Lane, you're right, did a great job of that. I think, again, it's almost interesting. If you were to take all of Mark Lane's books 
and then give them to someone who is just a terrific writer and say, turn them all into one book and weave it into a great story. I would like to read that book. Like sometimes Mark Lane goes a little off topic and kind of has his own personal story interwoven into it. Uh, he's done such incredible research just to see that laid out. I guess that's why I'm fond of Crossfire because it, it is Jim Mars trying to get out of the way and tell the story of what other researchers and have, have thought. Now, just to be brief about it, from what I'm determining here, Mark Lane is still around. Yes, he is. In fact, I've just finished reading his latest book, which is called Last Word, the Indictment of the CIA and the Murder of JFK, which is a good book. But again, it's kind of Mark Lane telling his story of fighting the CIA. It's, I'm not saying it's not important. It is important to, to think that people in the CIA are still messing with Mark Lane. I think that's a reasonable thing. But uh, most people aren't going to have that much time to fall in the rabbit hole like I've done and read so many different books. Most people are going to want you know, to, to get it a little faster than that, uh, because there's so much nuance you could read. And many people have, have spent their entire life reading. I've certainly spent at least the last 15 years reading. And, and I have a friend who has literally read cover to cover 500 books, many of them multiple times. This friend of mine, uh, his name is Don Clark and Don is a, uh, a former anchorman. And, and, uh, he's, he's come to the conclusion that it was LBJ. Mm. We'll never end that discussion. Let's go to that other discussion there. JFK and UFOs. Well, <laughs> another rabbit <okay>. hole. <laughs> Let's back up to Dark Skies, uh, the co-creation of it with Brent Friedman, 1994 and five, we started working on it. And uh, Brent and I, I had been reading about UFOs and I had been reading about JFK, but casually. And uh, Brent and I were saying, well, let's create a TV series. What would be a good TV series? I was just coming off the Fox television series, Mantis, which was about the first African-American superhero. By the way, um, that person, the actor who played in that role, he later was featured on the TV series Alias. Yes, Carl Lumley. Great right. actor. What's Terrific. happened to him? I haven't heard much from him lately. I don't know. I saw him when I was running the TV Academy a few years ago. We ran into each other in an event, I think, for Alias and sort of caught up. But I, I, I honestly don't know. He's a great guy. Now, Carl Lumley played this character in Mantis where he was wheelchair ridden. Yes, he except was. Except when he became this character. What I thought was more complex and interesting about it was that here is a scientist who is in a wheelchair. What does he want to do? He wants to walk. He doesn't want to be a superhero. He wants to walk. So he creates an exoskeleton so he can walk. And while he's out using his exoskeleton, people see it. And it's weird enough that he gets invested with their issues of superherodom and sort of gets that idea from the, the people who have witnessed him. So I thought it was kind of fun. So Brent and I were sitting around going, all right, well, enough of superheroes and all that. What can we do that, that would be kind of a groundbreaking? And what we came up with was, let's take the greatest conspiracies of the 20th century and put them in an atom collider and see what happens. So we took JFK and we took UFOs and we stuck them in that atom collider. And what we came up with was a TV series set in the 1960s where John Kennedy is assassinated because he was going to tell the truth about UFOs in his second term. We came up with that based on only that. That's why we came up with it. We didn't read anything that said that John Kennedy knew anything about UFOs. The internet wasn't very vibrant at that point. There was no place where we were going to be exposed to that. We hadn't read it in any books. We just came up with it because we said it makes for a great dramatic storyline. Why not? Now, flash forward to today, if you search JFK and UFOs, you can find lots of articles where it's implied that he knew something about it and where he may have told Marilyn Monroe about it and where he was sending memos to NASA about it. And Th that kind of thing. Uh, what the truth of it is, I, I don't really know. And I don't, I think it's obscure. I think it's obscure, but I will say this. I do believe that Roswell is a true event and was some kind of extraterrestrial connection. And there were people who were covering it up. If it was a true event, then each successive president 
would have some relationship to that truth. I think clearly Truman knew all about it because he was the guy that instituted the uh, cover-up. Uh, Eisenhower, being a military hero, would have known um, all about it because of D-Day, um, and he got briefed apparently on it. The reason we chose Kennedy was because of the conspiracy theory, but the storyline revealed itself because we thought, here's young John Kennedy. He is not Truman and Ike to have to deal with what might be a UFO secret, and the people who had it would certainly not trust him with it. And so therefore, if he came in, into possession of that knowledge, it would put him at odds with the people who were keeping it secret. So that's, that's my storyline. I have no idea beyond maybe what you know about it. I know Richard Dolan, who I wrote AD After Disclosure with, thinks that there is a legitimate, strong connection. Well, the question would be then, as we get to each successive generation of presidents, whether they know less and less of what went on until they reach a point where maybe they know nothing, and that might be the last few presidents. Dolan and I, when we were writing AD, we would literally, you know, talk on the phone every day for six months and about various things. It was one of the greatest intellectual pursuits I've ever done. I really enjoyed it. Here's how we lay We've already discussed through Kennedy. Johnson, Richard believes, had no real interest in this, but the, he let Hubert Humphrey sort of take the briefings, if you will, and uh, never really you know, obviously was too connected to it. Richard Nixon, there is that, that story with, uh, about him and, uh, Jackie Gleason showing Jackie Gleason, the bodies is pretty well sourced. So Nixon would certainly be somebody that the power brokers of, uh, the U S military would sort of trust with such a thing. So I think it, he probably knew about it. Nixon yeah. was the kind of person who wanted his fingers into everything. Yeah. We have, we have Bryce Zabel join us with Gene and Chris. You're in the, the Paracast. The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. GCN. Great talk radio starts here. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs. Convert from so many formats, I can't even list them. Download now to see if Graphic Converter is good for you, like one and a half million other users. Guess what? You could save money when you buy Graphic Converter. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL to get a special price for Graphic Converter. Go to LemkeSoft.com. That's L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. LemkeSoft.com. L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System System today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. Do you owe the IRS money that you can't pay? Are tax liens and levies ruining your life? Are you tired of being afraid just to go to the mailbox? If this describes you, then Dan Pilla can help. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla, and I've been solving tax problems for more than 30 years. In fact, I wrote the book that made it possible to negotiate settlements with the IRS, and I've helped thousands of people do exactly that. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. New changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever before eliminate their debts once and for all. There's no need for you to suffer another day with IRS debt. 
Call 800-346-6829. I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. A healthy digestive system supports a healthy immune system. system. And a healthy immune system protects you against infections and disease. Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse, available at Terragonics.com, is the key to digestive health. Pro-EM1 is a powerful liquid probiotic and is gentle enough to use every day. Pro-EM1 contains three groups of beneficial microbes and enzymes to cleanse and remove toxins, supports weight loss, improves absorption of food nutrients, and aids in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 one is dairy, wheat, and soy free, is non-GMO, has all natural certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is never freeze-dried. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Terraganics.com. Or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Pro-EM1, the raw probiotic. Hi, my name is Richard Dolan. You're listening to the Paracast. On the Paracast with Gene and Chris, we're talking to Bryce Abel. We started out with a discussion about his book, which I'm looking at right now in the iBooks version on a Mac running Maverick surrounded by enemies. And I know the answers to all the things that you can't find out unless you read the book. I know the secret. (laughs) <laughs> you do. That, by the way, did you enjoy seeing those uh, magazine covers? I think that the artwork is done very well. There's not a lot of artwork in the book, but if you kind of scroll through it. Well, there's those five magazine covers. In yeah, and then one there's is... one here called yeah. Top Story, The yeah. Secret Life of the President Yeah, from June 1965. So I can imagine those things being written. Chris, you have some more questions for us. Uh- We've got a bunch. I don't think we're going to be able to get to them all, but but I like this one. Um, being that you're with your experience in Hollywood, uh, w- could you see this? Is there a chance that this could be made into a movie? And Techno Mage T wants to know if so, who would you play to pick? Uh, who would you pick to play JFK, RFK, and LBJ? Obviously, uh, I think Den- uh, Randy Quaid has already done a fairly good job playing LBJ, so cool he would be yeah. my pick. But who would play the Kennedy brothers? Well, let's answer the first question. What's the chance of it being made into a movie? If I wanted it to be made into a movie, I guess I should have written it in 2011 and had it be on the New York Times bestseller list or something. Because the time frame of getting it made, obviously, what you're, you're going to see a lot of stuff between now and November 22nd. And then the air is kind of out of the balloon for a while. So I don't think it'll be made into a movie anytime soon. Although... Uh, it is getting a lot of great reviews. Like you go to Amazon, people really seem to like it. So it's possible that we may find that avenue, uh, but it would be in a few years. Uh, who should play it? You know, I, I I say you get the best person at the time. And so it really depends on uh, what that time is. But I'll tell you right now, I didn't particularly love the miniseries. I thought it was pretty cheesy, but I thought, and I'm blanking his name right now, the actor who played JFK and the Kennedys, um, Oh my God! Can you guys help me out here? Um, I can't. I know there's one William with Devane, Rob Lowe no, as no, the no. president. Hey, you know those guys playing Kennedy years ago. I know. I I never thought they suggested him as well as. Um, well, the, he's the Bruce guy from Greenwood? Little Miss. Sun- no, the, Bruce Greenwood's in Thirteen Days. He's good. Um, the actor from Little Miss Sunshine. Alan Arkin's in Little Miss Sunshine. Who, yeah, uh, but I'm I, talking about the dad. Anyway, that's who plays him um, in the Kennedys. He he suggests him the best. I I don't know. I I and you know Randy Quaid did a fine job. I know um, we we cast a, Robert Kennedy was a central character for us in Dark Skies. But again, the actor who played him in Dark Skies um, would no longer be acceptable because he's too old. Um, Bobby Kennedy, you know, wasn't even forty. So you you got to have a younger actor. And JFK was only forty six. I know that Rob Lowe is going to be playing JFK in. Um, the uh, adaptation of Bill O'Reilly's book, Killing Kennedy. You mean the um, book that was written for Bill O'Reilly? Yeah. And, and also, <laughs> what's with Bill O'Reilly becoming an apologist for the, the Oswald Acted Alone uh, mm-hmm. Warren Commission? I don't understand that. Um, I, 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 don't, I, don't, 
I really don't understand that. I mean, Bill O'Reilly ought to be smart enough to know that it wasn't Oswald acting alone, but there you go. Uh, but anyway, so what I would love to do- Well, you understand if Bill O'Reilly wrote his own books, I would worry about it, but maybe not. Right. <laughs> well, that's true. But he, he had a co-author and he's made kind of a, a cottage industry, hasn't he? Out of uh, He's done killing Kennedy, killing Lincoln, and now killing Jesus. Is the, I just hope he doesn't decide to write about me. That's all I can say. I just <laughs> wonder whether he will actually write a real book himself. I mean, he does what obviously Glenn Beck does. They have people write the books under their name because he doesn't have time. He's doing the TV show every day the, and he's doing all this other I've stuff. I've got the name. It's Greg Kinnear. Uh, I'm, it was just on the tip of my tongue there. Greg Kinnear does an excellent Greg job. Greg Kinnear, yeah. Uh, he actually, there are, there are angles in um, the Kennedys where he looks like JFK. I do not think Rob Lowe is going to look like JFK. You know, but Greg Kinnear is getting a little older now. He's in his 50s, isn't he? Yeah, but he looks just right in this thing. I mean, you know, maybe the voice isn't, and I don't think people should try to do a knockout impersonation, uh, that they should try to do something that is suggestive. Um, but but I think he did a great job. And and you know what? The actor who will probably get the job if they ever make Surrounded by Enemies into a movie is someone that we're not thinking of right now. That tends to be my experience with casting. You have an idea. Well, I'd really like this person. Then you find out they're not available or they want, you know, so much money that you can't afford to pay them or whatever it is. And then you end up finding the perfect person because you look a little harder. And, and uh, frankly, I think my tendency, if I was casting a Kennedy movie right now, would be to not cast the Rob Blows of the world because they bring all their baggage into the performance. Uh, as a producer, what I would rather do is find somebody who just dead on nails. I don't care if you know who he is. I would just like to make the movie with someone that you go, damn, I feel like I was watching a documentary on the guy. Quite often you pick somebody who is not known like they do with the superhero movies. So we yes. have this guy, Henry Cavill, playing Superman, but that doesn't explain Ben Affleck as Batman. Oh, well, Chris? Well, it, <laughs> well you need to have someone that could really duplicate the Kennedy accent. <laughs> well, you're not going to be in the role, I'll tell you right I now. Know. <laughs> I want to say this about that. It's, you're not going no, to forget it. I Everybody you, wants to imitate Kennedy. Person. I mean, we, you always wondered there, though, this guy is so bright. Why did he keep the accent? He could have lost that accent if he wanted. I think JFK was the, the, you know, he was the first television president. He was very well aware of how he presented himself. Why would he lose an accent? That's him. I mean, he, he, he really nailed his own performance. Uh, he, on one and he did it in an interesting way. I think that on one level, JFK was uh, perfect at being himself. He was comfortable in his own skin, and he was perfect at being himself. So he had that, and at the same time, he also understood that he was in a role, and he also played that role perfectly. Well, that's so, true with anybody, really, yeah. who gets a high position in politics. There's a lot of theater there. A lot of theater, but the, when you when you merge authenticity into the theater as JFK so seamlessly did, uh, you get something that's magic. Um, I have a quote I made up for um, uh, Sammy Davis Jr. and surrounded by enemies. And he, he's talking about JFK and he goes, that's magic times magic, man. And I think that's what JFK was. Okay. There you go. Chris, some more questions. Yes, we do. Uh, here's one from Wade Ridsdale, formerly known as Spooky Mulder. He's one of our 2000 Post uh, Club members. Maybe it's an urban legend, but wasn't one of the things that tied Reagan, Kennedy, and Lincoln together for their was their distaste for the Federal Reserve and an inkling to change the system? And would, be, would CIA be working on their behalf? First of all, uh, Wade Lincoln was uh, quite a quite a bit uh, before 1913 when uh, I think the Federal Reserve. Was that uh, when, when? When was the Federal Reserve actually put together? Anybody know off the top of the head? I think it was after Lincoln. Yeah, I would think. Uh, so he's saying the timing might, might might not be right, but he seems to remember that Reagan did not want George Herbert Walker, as he puts it, the New World Order Bush as a running mate. But the Hinckley family, who had ties to the Bush family and the CIA, saw to it that Bush was there to push his agenda. He says, "Sorry, I rambled a bit, but he just." 
got to thinking that while the CIA may have been the trigger men in the hits, uh, was that order coming from higher up? And in other words, I think he's talking about the Federal Reserve families and, you know, the banking cabal and, and that particular slant well, on the conspiracy. That that's I guess that's one of the more obscure uh, conspiracy angles on the JFK assassination. Although, you know, anything is is possible. Certainly JFK was involved in that and certainly that would have uh, upset people i tend to think that probably wasn't the reason for the hit i I just feel like there were too many other people involved in that hit who seemed to have knowledge of how to do it uh, that that made me feel more like cia uh, in involvement and certainly it's not just my opinion about what what a CIA hit looks like. It's more like some of the personalities of the time seem to be teed up and ready to go. Certainly, that's what Mark Lane thinks. All right. There's one more segment left. With Gene and Chris, we're talking to Bryce Abel. You're in The Paracast. <laughs> America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. If you want to get your website online and you need reliable service, first-class service at the lowest possible price, there's only one place to go. Well, DreamHost has a special promotion with our show where they'll offer you unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, one-click web apps such as WordPress, 24-7 support. You can save over $55. You want to know how? Go to DreamHost.com slash radio, DreamHost.com slash radio. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Wouldn't it be nice to have one product that replaces more than 10, saving you space, time, and money? HempUSA.org has a complete full-spectrum vitamin mineral detox formulation called MicroPlant Powder Gold. MicroPlant Powder Gold contains 101 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and iodine, has a 100-year shelf life, and is a perfect addition to any storage shelter. Make MicroPlant Powder Gold your choice. Call 888-910-4367 or visit HempUSA.org today. That's the sound of a 44 Magnum and Trauma Max. A high-tech hybrid Kevlar bulletproof vest from InfidelBodyArmor.com will stop it and most pistol rounds. Trauma Max is a major breakthrough in pistol-rated body armor, and prices start at just $170 per insert. More protection, more stopping power, more mobility, and it weighs less than 5 pounds. Get details at InfidelBodyArmor.com. That's I-N-F-I-D-E-L BodyArmor.com. To thank you for being a loyal listener, we have a limited time freebie offer for you. Claim your free heirloom tomato seeds, just pay shipping, right now at 123freeseeds.com. These aren't ordinary seeds. These are heirloom, non-genetically modified super seeds that are open pollinated and can be grown, harvested, and replanted endlessly. These survival seeds are actually more valuable than gold in a crisis. Go to 123freeseeds.com and you can get an airtight storage packet of 150 super seeds free while supplies last to say thank you for being a loyal listener. First come, first served. Just cover shipping. Go to 123freeseeds.com now to see if your free heirloom seeds are still available. That's 123freeseeds.com. Ouch! My back is out again! Hi, Dr. Ortman with Wellspring Spinal Care. If you're experiencing neck, mid, or lower back pain, this information is for you. One of the complaints that I hear is patients receive their typical adjustment, only having to repeat them as the pain returns. Putting the bones back in place is only half of the battle. At Wellspring Spinal Care, we have the entire solution. We use the NUCA approach, utilizing three-dimensional x-rays and gentle touch technology to deliver specific correction. We then design 
design a custom nutritional supplement program which provides essential nutrients targeting the areas of concern. With a NUCA approach and proper nutrition, you'll be on your way to a faster and more permanent recovery. To get you on the road to wellness, visit DrOrtman.com. That's Dr. O-R-T-M-A-N.com. Or call us today, 952-303-9124. That's 952-303-9124. Wellspring Spinal Care, chiropractic done right. Hello, this is Rosemary Ellen Guiley, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. We have the Paracast Echo there. The Echo Brothers, Chris O'Brien and Bryce Sable. They're <laughs> starting a brand new vocal group, and we'll ban <laughs> we have them a new- from the airwaves. We have a new CD coming out next week that I really want to talk about. Um, it's very good. I think you'll like it. <laughs> By the yeah. way, can I just put a plug in here? Uh, just because so, I know people are going to realize that they'd like to know more about it. There's two places. It's surroundedbyenemies.com. But there's another one that's got all kinds of great stuff to look at. You can even look at these magazine covers ahead of time if you want. Uh, so a kind of a this is something that we usually only give the people who are reviewing it. But I feel a uh, Feeling generous with the, the listeners here. It's called whatifkennedylived.com. Whatifkennedylived.com. You can see all the stuff we've talked about. All right. Chris, any more questions? Yeah, this is uh, Jeff Davis. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of this. I don't think it's much of a question, but he, he claims JFK did survive. Everyone knows that Ozzy Davis is actually JFK, post the skin color change operation, of course. But the only problem is that Ozzy died a few years ago, so I'm very sorry to ruin the show, but JFK is is dead now. You know, um, I don't buy any of that. I'm sorry. I mean, that's just, I mean, it's, I don't know. Well, how about, how about the uh, the Bill Hicks is uh, actually Alex Jones. That's, you know, none that's of that's, I, I got to tell you, even if JFK had lived, his health was so precarious, I don't think he would have, uh, he certainly wouldn't have lived to a ripe old age. Even if he'd had the nicest life around and people hadn't shot at him and he wasn't under such stress, he wouldn't have lived that long. So I don't, I don't think that's an issue. Yeah. But, you know, there's so many fascinating possibilities about what might have been had Kennedy survived. We can go on for about a week and not even cover what's in the book. That's absolutely true. I mean, it's a great uh, parlor game. And, and I guess that's actually why I wrote Surrounded by Enemies. It's been a parlor game. There's been people that have done versions of it before, but I felt like for the 50th anniversary, it was time to really treat that what if with the respect it deserves, to really break it down into the the building blocks and pieces and, and ask for real what might have happened had he survived at Dallas. And uh, that's been my, my goal all along. And I hope, I, you know, I hope that uh, the people who are listening will give it a read. And if you like it, I hope that you'll tell your friends about it because this isn't like a, some, you know, Hollywood screenplay or whatever. This is where I, I hope to go sell it to somebody. This is about communicating with people. This is uh, trying to take a message about JFK. And there's not a person listening who was alive at the time who doesn't have a memory about where they were with JFK. It's the same for that generation as it is for uh, the new generation on 9-11 and the same as it was for the previous generation on Pearl Harbor. It's a, it's a national touchstone. Um, enough time has passed that it's all right to uh, treat it uh, dramatically. Uh, that's been happening for a while now. Um, and and I think the the thing is now we realize that John Kennedy was a a complete person. He he wasn't just the uh, the Camelot character that he was portrayed as during his presidency and immediately after. But he was a pretty nuanced guy. Uh, he was a man's man, but he appealed to women. Uh, he he just had it all. He had looks. He had power. He had money. Uh, he had authenticity, and he had secrets. And I think the secrets are where the drama lies. But will we ever learn the truth? I'm going to say not the 100% of the truth. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's this. If you think, if you ask, if, that, if the essence of that question is, is there some memo that's a smoking gun that's going to be brought out? I don't think so. I think it would have long since been destroyed if it existed. I doubt that it ever existed. That's not how you assassinate a president. And is it going to be someone on their deathbed who comes forward? No, those are pretty much all 
all gone by now, and it hasn't really happened. And even if somebody on their deathbed claimed to have been uh, knowledgeable about the inside of the uh, Kennedy hit, I don't think we'd necessarily believe them. In fact, a, a very quick story, but a few years ago, I was given an unpublished manuscript by a guy who claimed to be one of the hitmen for Kennedy, uh, the Kennedy hit rather. And uh, we met with the guy and we read his manuscript very detailed, et cetera. Uh, lots of facts that uh, were corroborated, et cetera. Do I think he uh, was one of the assassins? No, I don't. I ultimately said he's just a guy who had a really important job, probably uh, worked for people in the CIA or was in the CIA, but he, in his uh, old age, has brought all these threads together with his own knowledge and is trying to pass it off in some kind of bid for immortality uh, or for financial gain if I would turn it into a movie. And I ultimately just said it's it's not the real thing. I also wonder about the reaction of the public if it was revealed that LBJ possibly killed JFK, if it was revealed, for example, at the CIA. How could they even reveal these things without causing all sorts of strange after effects? You're right. They, they can't really. But yeah, it's interesting. I've written two books. The first one, AD After Disclosure, was about what happens to the world after we acknowledge that UFOs are real. And the second one, uh, Surrounded by Enemies, about what what if Kennedy survived Dallas. I, I look at these very different. If, if we suddenly found out the truth about JFK, that it was Lyndon Johnson who ordered the hit with the CIA, we would still go, hmm. Well, LBJ's long dead. Sounds like the guy wasn't such a great guy. The CIA, well, we never trusted them anyway. Whatever. I think it would it, it would be accepted into the body politic without a tremendous amount of effort. Um, I look at the extraterrestrial disclosure as a as a different kind of thing because it's a game changer. It's not about the cover up then. It's about like, well, what does this mean? You know, what what would it mean if if uh we acknowledge that UFOs were real. That would change society. If we acknowledge that the CIA, for example, might have been involved in the Kennedy assassination, at best, it would lead to some hearings about reforming the CIA. But the CIA people who testified would all say, well, that was a long, long time ago, and that doesn't happen anymore. And those people were rogue elements anyway. So it wouldn't have the same impact. Besides, they're either retired or dead. Yes. So uh, it's, it's, it's like it, it would, it's, I think it's valuable information. I do believe that we as a society deserve to know exactly what happened with JFK. I wish that we could have known. We should definitely have known, but we don't. We, we know that, uh, it was a dark deed. And I believe we know that, uh, powerful forces, uh, conspired to bring it about, but we don't know the details of exactly how those forces did it. We don't know the names. Uh, we, we don't know the details. And we probably never will know the details. Yeah. I remember where I was. I was six years old, and I remember that day. And being I, bummed for days afterwards because there were no cartoons on TV, and all they had was these somber-looking people uh, on, on parade routes and commentary. I mean, that's the kind of stories we had. I remember that we had a really mean teacher uh, in grade school and that that teacher Only one? <laughs> always <laughs> made us eat our vegetables at noon. But when we came into the cafeteria that day, the TV was on and uh, Kennedy had just died and we all sat at our table. They hadn't sent us home yet. And the teacher cried at the table and we sat there at the table and didn't know what to do. And we weren't forced to eat our vegetables that day. And then they sent us home and we watched TV all weekend with our parents. And I watched my parents, who I had never seen cry before, I watched them cry. Yeah, that yeah, was a sad day. Yeah. I remember riding my bicycle home and I wasn't watching TV. I didn't know anything about what was going on. And my dad comes home from work and he says, turn on the TV. Did you know, the president was shot. Let's just leave it there. Bryce Zabel, where can we find more about the things you do? Well, listen, I, I have a my own personal website, BryceZabel.com. My name is kind of spelled weird, B-R-Y-C-E-Z-A-B-E-L, BryceZabel.com. The book is at SurroundedByEnemies.com. And a special Paracast uh, URL is WhatIfKennedyLived.com. So I welcome people reading it. I hope they'll interact with it. Uh, if they like it, 
I hope you'll leave a comment on Amazon. And uh, I thank you guys uh, for putting me on Paracast. It's it's so fun to talk about this with people that know the things that you guys know, and it's been great. So I appreciate it. Thank you. No, yeah, thank you. You're very welcome, Bryce. You can find Chris and all his stuff at OurStrangePlanet.com, OurStrangePlanet.com, and in the very near future, his new book, Stalking the Herd from Adventures Unlimited Press, will appear. You can find us on Twitter, where we are known as The Paracast. We are The Paracast on Twitter, because what else could we be? Or go to theparacast.com to check out more. Bryce Sable, thanks for joining us on The Paracast. Catch you guys later. Thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye. The Paracast, featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien, is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast.